You want to see his ticky tocky? No. Really, this is just the worst of the worst. You can literally, apparently you can literally just pay within the TikTok setup to have extra views on it. And he literally is paying for views on his stuff. Like, because you can see this is 2,000, 8,000, 5, 1, 15, uh, 500, 1,000, 182,000, 2,000, 3,000. That's not because he suddenly trends and then the next video after that doesn't get any views. That's because you just thought, this one I'm going to pay for 100,000 views, 150,000 views. So he just pays for them and boom, they're on there. Uh, and maybe he pays for 100,000, the other 80,000 come because he's paid for it and he gets a boost. And, and all that means in YouTube terms, I think for 100,000 views, you get like a penny on TikTok or something. I think this is worth like, you know, maximum 10 pence in advertising revenue. Um, it's just not worth doing. Now, I have proof that Hollywood have an actual real mermaid. Joe Lipper, who played uh, Mermaid Barbie in the film, actually is a mermaid. If you notice, you never see her legs. What? Oh, am I tripping? <sighs> These adverts need going in the bin, don't they? I need to sort that out. Obviously copyright, yeah, but here she is with her legs, look. There she is with her legs. <laughs> so she's definitely got legs, I've, I've covered that. I don't need to be an armchair detective to cover that. The thing that angers me here the most is it's a profile thing. He's, he's fixed it on one of them recently. He fixed it on one of them, but it's a profile thing, but he put in the landscape picture in the middle, and you know, you, you know I hate it. You know I hate the, uh, the choice in the media here. Not intending to cause the man alarm nor distress, huh? Uh, but you know I hate the media framing like this. But the other thing about Alan's TikToks is that this TikTok is 3 minutes 38 seconds long, and already people will have decided whether they want to skip on or not, won't they? You understand that? So it's impossible, bear this in mind, right? If you make a three minute TikTok, it has to be the best three minutes of your fucking life. Because if someone swipes past on the first 10 seconds, they've only watched less than like 10%, less than 1% of your video. And TikTok algorithm, algorithm is gonna judge not just on how long someone watches the video, but how much of the video they watch. So a, a two second TikTok that's really good gets people watching 10 times, does really well, but a 30 minute TikTok <laughs> that's not very good goes right to the bottom and all of Alan's TikToks are over three minutes long. So they all go right to the bottom and the ones that get 100,000 views, it's fake. <laughs> What's he doing here? The, the comments say, please tell me you're joking. It's the dress, it's very structured and a lot of laughs and you are so funny, Alan. Oh, the trolls are gonna say you're serious. What's in your coffee this morning? So is he doing this for fun? It's always a long dress covering the fishy bits, right? Covering up the fishy bits. And that's a picture this of her. Half woman, half that's a picture of her with her boobs out. A fish. Like you can basically nearly see her nips through that. Like what this is is Alan's been looking at pictures of Dua Lipa from the Barbie movie, and one of them's probably caught him. One of his back crew, his backroom crew, and he said, "Oh, I'm going to do a video on that. It's a joke that I'm doing." That's what's happened here. Like, watch me psychoanalyze this. Someone said to him, why have you got videos and pictures of Dua Lipa from Barbie on your phone? And he, or why have you been watching this TikToker who's doing the Dua Lipa dance or something? And he said, like this particular image of her with her boobies, like he's been caught behind the scenes by his crew who help him make the TikToks doing something seedy with Dua Lipa pictures. And he said, it's, I'm making a video about it. And he's made this video, honestly, that's my best guess. And I'm going to prove it to you. At the Golden Globes, she uh, let it slip that her body isn't like the normal female body. Watch, as she tries to sit down. She can't because she's got flippers and it's mostly fit. It's because her dress has got all wiring in it and stuff. Ish. It's a bodice. Yeah, sorry, you need to sit down now. It's hard as Dua tries, she just can't sit down like a normal woman.
because he's got flippers and it's mostly fish. Now, of course, they propped her up for the Golden Globe, so she's standing still. It looks like she's a proper woman. But if you look down the dress, you don't see her feet, do you? The flippers are hidden in a special... What even is this? What even is this? ...to trolley that she, they wheel out. And here's the proof. She cannot sit down because she's not the shape of a woman. She needs water. She needs to be submerged in water. Anyway, Hollywood have got a real mermaid, and it's a secret. I absolutely love being Mermaid Barbie. Not convinced? Well, here's Miss Lipper accidentally admitting she loves water. Miss Lipper admitting she loves water by accident. Hey, I busted you. You said you're, you love water. Well, you know, you can love water. <laughs> I mean, do you think this is a troll on the trolls? It can't be, though, can it? Because Alan never does anything like this. Why would he do this? Do you know what I think this is as well? If it's not that he's been caught out with dodgy pictures of Dua Lipa and Barbies, um, what's he really doing behind the scenes sort of thing? I think that... Oh, the Bristol Pusher, we could look into that as well. Curious Cat, yeah, we'd have to do that. Um, but this is also, for me, this is... Um, Alan... Uh, he said the other day, didn't he? Oh, I've got it here. Hang on. I've got it here for you. I've got it here for you. It's so young, isn't it? Tiki Toppy, so young. <laughs> so young. Anyway, it's so young, isn't it? Tiki Toppy, so young. <laughs> so young. Anyway, it's so young, isn't it? Tiki Toppy, so young. <laughs> so young. Anyway, it's so young. So Tiki Toki so young, isn't it? So maybe he's trying to appeal to young people. And of course, you don't... And maybe he's trying to think, well, what kind of conspiracy theory do young people believe in? Like, they're not bothered about the moon landings, but young people might be interested in conspiracy theories too. See her legs. Watch how she pretends it's okay to be wet. You know? She's half fish, remember? Here, watch. So sorry about the rain. Oh, that's all right. I'm sure we're going to have a really good time. Her assistant snatches the umbrella away from the poor... Because how on earth, right, if it's a joke, it's a joke, right? But how do you go to this next level of finding this video of Dua Lipa and saying that she likes the water because she was... Good? Like, how do you get... I've never seen this video of Dua Lipa in an umbrella. Like, how does he get to that? You understand what I'm saying? Dua Lipa is real life mermaid Barbie in sheer dress. YouTube. Dua Lipa is a mermaid in Barbie. Like, if you search it and even search real life mermaid, you're going to come up with all this Barbie stuff, aren't you? But even, like, I'll tell you what, I didn't know Dua Lipa was in Barbie. And I didn't know Dua Lipa was a real life mermaid in Barbie. I thought, you know, this is a step too far for Alan to even have this knowledge in a way. Like, what even is going on? Unless he's been busted with weird pictures of Dua Lipa and, you know, and stuff like that. Like, how on earth, where is he getting this from? I thought it might even come up as a, you know, conspiracy theory if I Google it. Um... Conspiracy. TikTok, Dua Lipa is mermaid, she was born ready. Dua Lipa giving us mermaid Barbie all over again. Dua Lipa is a, but like, there's TikToks about it, but they're kids and people talking about what she's like in the film. There's this from RTL. Uh, TikTok, this is uh, 2022, 10th of the 10th. TikTok video revives mermaid claims with footage from fictionalised documentary. So, you know, 
maybe Alan's trying to jump on a bandwagon of some kind of viral video. What the fuck, though? Oh, PA girl. And bear no in mind, way. like, this is two minutes into a three and a half minute TikTok, and you know that that's wrong in itself. That uh, the mermaid wants to get wet as quick as possible. Did you see that as well? He's using YouTube. Look. Wants to get wet. You see the YouTube thing fading no off way. there? That uh, the mermaid wants to get wet. It's, it's, it, that actually annoys me now at this point. He, in plain sight, consistently is using YouTube on all of his media, but he's banned from YouTube. Like, he knows that he can't do anything without YouTube, but he's not allowed to use it. What a cheeky chuffer. As quick as possible. Text him, for God's sake, get rid of this umbrella. It's obvious, isn't it? She's a mermaid. She has to get, like... A His grandkids are not interested in Dua Lipa. Just in water. Quickly. If she skin goes dry. Her PA assistant, it's obvious... She loves water. She everyone, wants to be wet. Everyone likes water. The more wet, the better. It's, it's a more My proof. favorite moment was really working with Greta. She's absolutely infectious and she's so amazing to work with. Right, headshots only for Barbie, mermaid. Yeah. Quick way they get away with it. They make these marvelous dresses where it flays out. And if this is a troll on the trolls, yeah, if this is a troll on me to even cover it and talk about it, then I still win because what the fuck are you doing getting pictures of Barbie into your editing software? How have you got, like, to do this, you've got these pictures on your phone in your editing software, yeah? So if someone comes and checks your phone, you've got all pictures of Dua Lipa and Barbie and shit like that. And that's normal, and that's fine then. That's fine. That's normal. You're, you're, you're the winner here if you trolled the trolls because you made a really creepy fucking weird video about kids' toys and Barbies and Dua Lipa and, like, made a really... you like, to the uninitiated who's not watching, you know, to normal people on TikTok, uh, they don't get that you've hit out of the trolls, do they? They think, who's this fucking strange man and this weird shit? And, like, who's it aimed at and for? So, shot yourself in the foot a bit here. This is an absolutely weird choice. Like an evening gown. Very clever, but you don't fool me. Even the doll is wearing... Uh, a it's the Barbie doll. A dress, isn't it, really? To, to, to make you convinced, you know, when you do see the, the real one in Hollywood, that, you know, she's a normal woman. Beautiful, shiny scales on, on the mermaid. It is very much like uh, a, a top designer evening gown, isn't it? Here I sickly took... Do you remember Alan actually painted a picture of a merman? Do you remember that? Like, it makes me think of that. He drew, he drew a picture of a merman before and he actually talked about mermaids before on one of his streams before. Like, he talked about it once before. It's just making me wonder. Like, is the man... Uh, is the man okay in the head? Like, is this been made during a, a fit of delusion? A picture lower down and you can see the shape of a mermaid quite clearly. Of course, Hollywood will fool you occasionally to show you photographs of her or even movies of her with legs, but this is a body double and they only show her bottom half. It's very... No, they don't. We just literally watched it. No, they don't. I'm not going back to it again. No, they don't. Clever they do it. It's not her. It's a body double. Very fishy. Do you think, like me, that... That really, Dua Lipa is just hot tuna. No. What do you mean, hot tuna? In disguise. I have proof. Right, so, like I say, a three minute TikTok cannot get millions of views. Yeah, that one's only got 500 views. Right, so if you see it get loads of views in the future, you will know that something's going weirdly wrong as well. Because, like, here's something else about this that's really important about the view botting. If you go to his Rumble, for example, uh, hang on, go to his Rumble, for example. Like, 22 hours ago, this last one, the DA Raw one, 22 hours ago now, is up to 600 views, yeah? And a usual YouTube video, like, I'm just going to quickly grab any YouTube video on my stats. Uh, it doesn't matter what channel it is. Um, YouTube Studio. I'm just going to go to Content. Uh, here's the streams, so I'll go to my recent live stream, like the Boogie one. Um, Boogie Analytics and 
the real time views there. I'll just take a screenshot of the actual real time views of the video. You're not really supposed to share your, your stats like this, but it doesn't matter. Um, we'll go to go here where I can quickly show it you home paste like this. Um, so what you see here from any any stream, any video is the first bit here. The first big chunk is where I'm live. You've got that first jump, the biggest, highest point on that graph. That first hour I'm live, the second hour I get the biggest number. Because I'm live, it's new, it's on the internet, it's brand new, new video. If it's a video, that drops off very quickly. This one's carried on for a couple of hours because I'm live for a couple of hours. Yeah, so people are still there watching. Look what happens when I stop being live. So it drops off and it goes away. Yeah, that's a very stark. And then it has a little murmur the next day and then it drops off. That's a very stark one. Um, but that's most streams for everyone. And most video drops as well. We drop a video, the first couple of hours you get your big peak and then it drops off quite dramatically, and then it tails like that, yeah? So most videos, most content is to that. If you do well and it starts to grow and grow and grow, obviously this can grow itself, can't it? You can get more views in day two, day three, but mostly day one views are where it's at for most videos, most normal stuff, especially the stream stuff that me and Alan do and stuff like that, yeah? That's, that's what it's normally like. And you'll notice as well, browse features, notifications and all that, like similar sort of graph. Suggested videos down here, 6.2%. That's a little flat line, but it will keep giving me views. You know, that flat line will continue for the next couple of days and it will slowly get more views on it, slowly. But the percentage of views are all in the first moments that you are live and then it drops off. And that's the same for pretty much, I could grab any other video and I'm going to now just to sort of um, prove this as a concept. Um, again, I'm going on battery exhaustion because it's the one where I we're open on at the moment um but something that got more views even maybe attacked by the toad uh, the analytics to that um this is a different way of looking at the views because uh um the analytics to this are a different kind of graph but it points this proves the same thing right so i'll get this screenshot and paste it because it's not real time because it's finished a long time ago now uh, but you see how this is attacked by the toad that video, uh, that live stream, we got loads of views in the first hour, two hours. That's where it goes up very quickly. And then it smooths out where you get far fewer views over a long, and after a long period of time, you're only just going up a little bit at a time. So the graph goes up very quickly at the start and then it slows right down. And that's normal uploads, yeah? So for Alan's stuff, if it's had 600 views and that was 24, 22 hours ago, that's it. Like 22 hours ago, at the end of the stream was when the cutoff was. That's not going to go any higher. It can't get any more views. Like it's on Rumble. It's it's crap. <laughs> it's had its bump. There's no way that you can just come back in a week's time and that's gone up to a thousand. Not on any normal viewing metric by any normal legitimate channel. And his other stuff, like I know it from looking at it. These, like, the big DA Raw, oh, a thousand views on that one. When it finished at the end of the stream, it was on, like, 300. Now, like, if you look down these, and if you pay attention to the numbers initially, there is no way his Christmas episode, an upload of a TikTok, which even his own fans didn't want to watch because they'd even seen the TikTok, that got over a thousand views. It's not possible. It's not possible for your graph to go up and then drop and then wait and wait and then go up. Like that, off from nowhere. Not even if you post the video on Facebook. Like, you're not going to get a thousand people on Facebook to, to watch it. So, you can prove the view botting. And the same with this 2,000, 8,000, 5,000, 1,000. The, the, this one, 500. If these go up, they've had their moment. They've acquired 2,000 views because you've been fucking view botting for so long. You've acquired a few random people. But that's tiny numbers in TikTok numbers. And if it goes up after that, how? It's not going to suddenly get picked up by the algorithm. It's been dropped off the algorithm. You have to force it onto the algorithm by paying for fake views. And that's what happens. And you'll notice that some of these end up with this like bigger number on them. But that can't be legit, can it? It can't be, because I just showed you the graphs on how they work. Don't get me egg on about it. But yeah, so I'm interested to see whether this Barbie one will end up with lots of views now um, because it simply can't have them. 
it's rubbish it's three minutes long and it's a TikTok. <laughs> what am I supposed to make of that? In the in the interests of interests, I do also want to talk about the Bristol Pushers. He talked about it in one of his episodes, but he reviewed his own TikTok. So should we start with the TikTok? Because I'll call this one Alan's terrible TikToks and just upload it to YouTube. You just um, say that all these young ladies' belongings at the bank. So this is the video, the TikTok, and this is how it starts. So imagine you are scrolling TikTok, you dirty bastard. Imagine you're scrolling TikTok, you do it, right? And then that just happens. You just say that all these young ladies' belongings at the bank. Who say all these young ladies' belongings at the bank? Like, what are you going on about? And that's it. That gets skipped. Yeah, agreed? Anyone in the world disagree that that gets skipped on TikTok by 99% of the audience? Surely. At that moment there, just even not, maybe before it by some of the more, you know, quick ones, but that's gone. But it goes on for another 5 minutes and 20, min 20 seconds. So by that metric, how on earth can that trend algorithmically? How can it get any views at all? It drops right off the bottom straight away because someone skips it. They've skipped so much of it. <laughs> it's talking about the Bristol Pusher. This girl, Ash, a legitimate TikTok user, Ash, bless her, um, a young girl, is now commenting on his videos. So I don't like that. That's not good, is it? Now Alan's able to contact young girls on TikTok who are commenting on his videos. I've said this for years, the Bristol Pusher, because how many drunk people falling in? Um... You know, it's not ideal, is it? Anyway, Alan's going to out himself. Now, I said he couldn't do anything outrageous, but he is. He can. He can talk about the Bristol Pusher and out himself. If the police are watching, this is potentially Alan's work, and he's going to have to prove to you why he wasn't doing it, because he lived in the area, and he's an angry, strange man. Disappearing, just a coincidence. With a fascination for murder. About the men that went missing in Bristol. These were all young men, as opposed to young women who were, it seemed, pushed into the river, one after the other. In fact, in one period, they lost six or seven in a few months. All young men, all pushed in the river, all no witnesses. Of course it's just... No witnesses, but Alan knows what happened to them. The coincidence, they all just were drunk, according to the Bristol police. Are oh, they intoxicated? No. These are nice young men, some of them. Not all of them. I wonder if any of them wanted to date his daughter. It's a sequence, a pattern, just like the nick of the bully, gain of lord, and the young lady missing at the moment as well, Lucy Charles. It's not a coincidence. It's a possibility that someone's doing it, right? Because this guy's never been caught in Bristol. This guy's never been caught in Bristol, so now we know it's a man. Because there is no proof. There's no proof. They were going missing one after the other. The police got scared. Oh, no, 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 no. It's not a serial killer. There's no mystery at all. We've checked them all out, and there are no suspicious circumstances in any of them. Have you heard this before? A latest body, latest body. And of course, when it goes national, then the police say something. They squash the rumours of a serial killer. Was it a serial killer? I've no damn idea. But all that they were all young. I've no damn idea. Well, it could be could have been you though, couldn't it, Alan? Could it? Men from Bristol and Bath. Not talking to him directly to cause him alarm and distress, but all dead now. He really I'm... likes this one, doesn't he? Gotten. But there's still men going in. Not such a regular thing, but. Even in, uh, this year and last year, that there's, there's <laughs> men going missing in Bristol rivers. I guess it is a thing that can happen when you're drunk and you're walking home. But this many, the parents aren't happy with the uh, suggestion that they all ended their lives. Because as a parent, you don't want to think your child was so unhappy. This is a good TikTok, isn't it? That he's going to end his life. But that's what the police say, and you have to take it. I don't even want to listen to any more of it two minutes in. It goes on for five minutes. Because they never, they never come to any other conclusion.
a deluge of missing men uh, drowned and found in Bristol uh, was uh, Deacon Williams Wilkins from Western Super Mayor went missing after living in a nightclub. See, he even knows exactly who these people are. He was found floating in the harbour on February the 5th, Louis Ball, 26. Well, how come Alan remembers all these names? Who left another nightclub on February the 6th. I was going to have to try and do this and research. he was found on February the 27th. Um, actually, those names I know come from one specific article, which I did research, as does that photograph. So he obviously found that one article and researched that. Um, but is Alan able to corroborate his movements around this time? Because I know he lived in the area. That's two in, in a few weeks. Yeah, he mentions the Manchester pusher as well at some point, Asbo Casbo, yeah. 29, he was seen leaving his home in February the 24th, whose body was found in the River Avon in March the 17th. Now, they've investigated all this and say these deaths appear to be tragic accidents. But the discovery of a fourth body prompted social media to say, come on, there's a Bristol pusher. Pusher. So, Carolyn Franklin said on the police um, report page, isn't it time you stop living in cloud cuckoo land and start investigating this properly? It's obvious yeah, something the news, sinister's going on. Except paraphrasing what they said instead of reading it exactly, because it's Alan. That's the linked or I'm the, skipping the it. Is there another serial killer at work pushing young men into the Bristol waterways? Another serial killer? What, other than you? Well, I'm going to look into this. I'm going to look into this. I always, Se- I, I always thought it was you that was doing it. Several young men... Is too many. One or two is too many. So uh, I, I counted at least five bodies found in just five months. Now the cops are denying there's a pusher. Did they look into it? You just said that earlier. This is TikTok. You can't repeat yourself. It's so sad to see these men go in month after month. Boring. Well, it is boring, isn't it? But that's his coverage of the Bristol pusher. Is to read the names that he found in the article on the internet. <laughs> And go, this is bad. This is bad. Is there pushed in the river? Oh, it's Bristol Pusher. It's bad. It's bad. Like, there's nothing, there's no substance to it. Do you know what I'm saying? There's no substance to it. It's like, um, waste of everyone's time, isn't it? How many views did that officially get? 80,000 views. Do you know what I mean? A five minute TikTok like that got 80,000 views. Come off it. Come off it. Come off it. Don't be stupid. Honestly, don't... Don't tell me that's... You know, that can't be right, can it? That can't be right at all. Good evening. Can you hear me and see me? The usual question. The usual damn question. Can you hear me and see me live? Can you hear me and see me? The usual question. The usual damn question. I guess you can. Who's going to be the first to say, hello, AD, I can see you. I can hear you. Did you watch me on Tiki Toki just now? I love that ticky toppy rubbish. <laughs> Don't call it rubbish. Well, it's so young, isn't it? Ticky toppy, so young. <laughs> so young. Anyone see me yet? Rumble. Rumbled. It's so young, isn't it? Ticky toppy, so young. <laughs> So young. Anyway, it's so young, isn't it? Ticky toppy, so young. He's not safe there, like, in terms of... I don't want to make him feel alarm and distress, of course. I mean, what I mean is his content's not safe there from being banned off TikTok. Like, it doesn't mean just because you're on TikTok and we're on YouTube and you've been banned off YouTube, like, he's going to just be fine. Like, he's going to do things that are going to get him in trouble beyond the pale. And also, the people of TikTok, the, like I keep saying, the, the larger he gets the more they will search for him on other media platforms on YouTube. His cover that he says on Rumble is that he's been banned off the Watts case, and that's why he's banned, so it's because he's got so close to the truth. But they'll find out, if the police could, the normal people will. Um, so it won't help him really, will it? But uh, it makes me feel bad for the, the young people on TikTok who are in some way 
having Alan watch their videos and interact with them that they don't, you know, it's all a bit, isn't it? I feel bad for them and for the ignorant people who don't, I'm not saying ignorant that they're stupid, ignorant that they're ignorant of his behaviour, they don't know who he is, like they're not, unaware people would be a better word, who stumble into his content and then watch it, like that's bad for them. But it's not translating to a lot of Rumble views and it's not translating to a lot of new new patrons. So it's not translating to a lot of money for him. So as I said, it is inconsequential. Um, we were going to look into the Bristol Pusher as a proper thing. Do you know what I'd quite like to do? What I'd quite like to do, I think this would be funny, is to take one of his episodes, like whatever he did yesterday, and just do it on YouTube and just plagiarise the shit out of it. Because he used to do that to other people and it used to make them really cross. But he will be like, oh, that's my episode. That's what I said. And I'll be like, I, I uncovered all this. <laughs> you know, tongue-in-cheek sort of thing, but yeah. He's got a right hardy on for D.A. Rourke again for a different case. D.A. Rourke exposed, but no one cares. But suddenly, like a few hundred more extra ones care all of a sudden when you need them to. It went wrong for him in the middle of one of these, I think. There's one simple hearing hack oh. anyone can use to improve their oh. hearing almost overnight. Rum rumble videos. Oh. Why did this go wrong? This is a bit funny. Oh, I didn't think I would get... Um that on uh, TikTok. Treatment works. Now the search for... It's loose. Heck. Is that the river's fault? So here, this is the banger on D, where Lucy Charles is gone. Her clothes were found, her belongings were found on the bank. I don't know why it's stuck. Going well. Oh dear, it's gone. Okay. So... There are a number of women going missing, right? Am I stuck as well? There's a number of women going missing. Too many women going missing. We all know about Nicola Bully. Am I frozen? Buffering? Is it the weather? <laughs> I'm buffering, man. Are we back? <laughs> I honestly... How many did this video get? 800 views. Like, at this point, 20 minutes, it's 17 minutes into the broadcast. Do you think there are people that are sticking around for this? I don't know. So, let's see. If I can try again. So we do know... No, like, to me, 600 sounds like a lot of views on this. How many did I say? 800 it's got. It's, uh, to me, about it's, the uh, number of young ladies going missing. Nicola Bully. Gaynor Lord. And now this latest one, Lucy Charles, all leaving their belongings on the bank. But what about young men? Well, in Bristol... Disappearing, but just a coincidence. Let me explain about the men that went missing in Bristol. These were all young men, as opposed to young women, who were, it seemed, pushed into the river, one after the other. In fact, in one period, they lost six or seven in a few months. All young men, all pushed in the river, all no witnesses. Of course, it's just a coincidence. They all just... I don't deserve this. Are oh, they intoxicated? No, these are not. Oh, there it goes. Oh, here we go. Come on, man. Come on, man. I don't deserve this fate. Serial buffering. 
TikTok does this all the time. Ah. So we have 20 plus drownings in Bristol. 20 plus. It's young men, some of them. Not all of them. How's spelled? I'll get this point across if it kills me. I have a serious problem with um, freezing tonight. I don't know what it is. Not sure. We have a serious problem tonight, guys. That is a large number of people in Bristol. I and mean, Alan used to live in that area and the people were going in the river and then Alan moved and it stopped. I don't know what's wrong. I'm not sure what's wrong. I've got to shut down all my other devices. I've got to shut down all my other devices and just leave this one. Okay, now I've shut down all my other devices so I can't see what you're saying. I can only see what I'm saying. And I'm going to try again. What do you mean? To reintroduce. I can only see what I'm saying. <laughs> some TikTok. Just bear with me. You yeah. don't mind watching me. Looking at me. It's okay. That is the show. Okay. Armchair detective. Armchair detective. That's you. Armchair detective. That's you. Oh dear. This is the show. I think it's like something general tonight because I keep freezing. Which your computer is. I don't know what it is. Which your computer and your internet connection and your settings. No, I can't do it. It's just not. Everything's freezing. Oh, maybe Steve's boiling the kettle. Maybe Steve. I'm going to go and come back in again. Steve might be doing a chucky egg. Oh dear. So do you see what I mean? It's like even if this is someone who regularly gets 800 views on a video, this particular video would get fewer views or maybe more depending on your situation here, eh? But like, you know, this particular video would get fewer views, wouldn't it? Because at this point, most people are just watching, just checking stuff out, just watching. They're going to go away. Like they're going to stop watching the video because nothing happens. And like that was happening for the last 10 minutes. Like people like us are interested, but really, do you know what I mean? Like, this is not going to get the same number of views than there's... Maybe I should test out the theory and do this on one of my streams. I mean, sometimes we do have a little um, obs glitch, don't we? I'm back very quickly and we just move on. But this is a little bit longer than that. It's a little bit more than that. So you have to just make your own entertainment until he comes back, I suppose. We're good at that. I'll tell you a joke. I don't get no respect around here. I tell you, I... Oh, he's back. I was going to do a joke. Though. Dyslexic. What the hell? <laughs> oh, man. Am I back? I think so. The armchair detective, back. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Can you see me? Do de fucking do de. Fun, aren't we? <laughs> you are. Having fun. Fun, fun, fun in the ba bum bum ba ba bum bum bum. Do de do de do de. Right, is that better? I don't know. What do you mean? Is it better? Better than what? It's the same. You're only getting half. You're only, I'm only going to charge half price tonight. It's all gone pear shaped. Good joke. Not funny. Didn't laugh. I'm going to have to be told if you can see me. Yeah, you can see me. Right. Okay. So you start. always have to be told. What I've done, I've closed everything down and rebooted the system. 
Right, it's still Let's glitchy. Let's see if I can get going again. I think you can't handle the green Maybe screen. because I left it on overnight. My guess... Because I left it on overnight was a problem. Or you think it's because you left it on overnight? Why did you leave your computer on overnight for? Was it a mistake or was there something you were doing? Because um, he uploads a lot of stuff to YouTube and then uses YouTube to watch videos and stuff. It's, it's very strange. But the... Uh, the possibility is that Alan's computer simply can't handle live streaming with a green screen, watching videos, all that stuff at the same time. Maybe his internet connection can't handle it. Um, it's a consistent recurring problem with Alan's stuff. So either he gets it fixed or it just keeps happening, yeah? Well, look. See if this works. They're killing people around the country and we're just ignoring it time after time. We're just ignoring it. The girls going missing recently. We've had the Bristol pusher. We like basically, if you can just get drunk and ramble into a microphone, and people are going to pay you for it, then I guess good luck to you. I going to be a guest on Harsh. We have the Manchester pusher. Over eighty people in the canal. Many parents saying there's no chance that my son did this on purpose, or was even drunk. Can they all have been? Accidental? Could they all have been just no suspicious circumstances? Well, we're back on now, aren't we, Alan? The Bristol. Oh, oh no! no. Oh, oh wait, wait! Drunk? Can they all have been accidental? Could they all have been? We're back on yet? Just no suspicious circumstances? No. I'm a trier, aren't I? A trier? I have no idea what's going on. A trier? I'm a trier. Try your luck. All put together. Sum it up. Dumpa, dumpa, dumpa truck. What makes you think I give a fuck? I'm like, labels out of fashion. Rip you off like the tax and customs. I don't even need a reason. I'm like, labels out of season. I'm a king killer committing treason. I'm Hassan. You're heathens. Not passing the mic to so keep dreaming. You like boxes. You get beaten. You like foxes having a dream season. This court's in session. So don't judge me when I party like Jamie Vardy. I score the hotties. I'm not into your Maseratis, keep your Ferraris in their garages, conceptual art like a modern artist, I'm an installation that make you question your nature, I'm naughty like Dizzy Rascal, not hip hop I'm grime you asshole. come from UK garage like Arsenal team coach, let's do the Wenger, all bow down now like EastEnders like Midlands, like Birmingham <laughs> other MCs think they're aces, I'm serving them <laughs> anyway look Ugh. oh Maybe I should just talk. Talk about what, Eddie? <laughs> this is weird. So we've got the Manchester pusher, we've got the Bristol people going, and we've got the young ladies. Hello, dear. That's him doing it on his stream. That's happening on the stream, look. Can you see me? I can see you. Am I am I actually able to work? Let's see if I can work without TikTok. I can just talk. Well, considering all the TikTok is is just you talking, you should be fine. <laughs> this is AD's Rumble. This is what I'm saying. Like, there's not much to cover. I noticed this bit in the middle of an episode, but other than that, there's not much to cover. I'm just showing it at the end of the. We did a little quick overview of his. Someone wanted to ask about the Bristol Pusher. I said he's done a TikTok of that. So we looked at it, we looked at how bad his TikToks were, we looked at that, and then we're looking, following up on the Bristol Pusher coverage here on his Rumble. And this is like, so imagine you're a normal person who saw a TikTok and then thought, I will follow this up on the Rumble, and then this is what happened. There is no way this can organically grow your content. <laughs> Am I frozen? Can you see me? Can you hear me? I'm not over impressed with it. One, two, three, testing, one, two, three. We're okay. All right, so I'm not gonna try showing you any more films. Even though I have the patience of a saint. He has the patience of a saint. I'm not gonna do any more. I'm gonna bore you with my voice. He's gonna bore you with his voice for another hour and 20 minutes, but he does get the films on again, look. Try and protect him, man. On plus one HD, I think this is, 
Channel 4 Plus. Like, I think it's a Channel 4 program that he manages to get up, probably through YouTube, is it? Five this morning. The body of a... Let's try it this way around. Let's try it this way around. YouTube, sign in. Channel 4, Manchester Serial Killer 2016. So copyright material from YouTube as an extended hour-long section. So he's not going to bore you with his voice. He's going to play you a Channel 4 documentary that's copyright, that's on YouTube, and he's not allowed to use YouTube. So he's useless. Yeah, you can watch that yourself on YouTube without having to watch it through Alan's shit internet. <laughs> Fucking, does he never change, Alan? Like, this is an hour ago, right? And this is the McCann's. The McCann's. In 2020 fucking four. The McCann's. You're right, Alan. You yes, look I'm like. Alive. You are live, but barely. You look like you're in 110p. Who's going to see me first? <laughs> Who's going to see me first? I'm going to have a look, look, little look at this to make yourself feel better. Because <laughs> that Luke stuff was fucking ghastly, wasn't it? He's wearing his jacket again, look. Has he been out pushing? Right, anaphylaxis is the one. Always the one. Always the one. Not intending to try and cause him alarm and distress with that caveat. Seems I'm here. You can see me now? Yes, I'm here now. I'll tell you what, I'm a busy man. I can't believe how damn busy I am. <laughs> you, armchair detective, live on Rumble. I've just come from TikTok across the road. Oh, do you see what I mean? Do you see what I mean? We were even here a minute ago. We missed him being live on TikTok and it goes into the distance. It goes into the, the nothing. And we missed that shit. Like, detractors be slipping here. I'm, I'm, I'm serious here as well now. Like, that's my own fault in a way, but detractors be slipping. Get yourself fucking... Somebody needs to be recording his TikToks. He's just been on the fucking TikTok. Who's he been talking to on there? TikTok for 20 minutes and people saying, are you going live on TikTok? I'm not there for 20 minutes. And if you see me on TikTok, I've been there doing an advert saying, please come and watch me on Rumble. Which is a stupid move, but yeah, so at least it's a load of shit. And I, I read out the Smith statements as well, for those who weren't there. Now, this is all interesting. So TikTok is going well, guys. I'm there for 20 minutes. And if you see me on TikTok, I've been there doing an advert saying, please come and watch me on Rumble. And I, I read out the Smith statements as well, for those who weren't there. This little look, right? It... Body language analysis, this little look. He's angry at people for not, but for those that weren't there, you, you should have been there, he chuffers. But also he's checking, he checks, he checks, because that's the natural move by a liar. So he's about to tell some lies. Now, this is all interesting. So TikTok is going well, guys. No, it's not. I think. It seems to me that I'm becoming a Who's Drowned This Week channel. Brilliant. Uh, the thing is that Alan wants to project the idea that things are going well to his audience and to the spanners, so they think they're part of something that's important, when actually, they're not. <laughs> they're not. So it's all lies. It's all just smoke and mirrors. He's paying money to make himself look better on TikTok, and it makes him look ever so worse. Sounds strange, doesn't it? But I'm like, if you look at the stuff I'm doing on TikTok, it's like drowning after drowning after drowning. Uh, all going very well. Um, little bits of this, bit of that. I've done a thing on Prince Harry and uh, Mr. Hewitt. What about the mermaids? Today, which is interesting. What about the mermaids? But anyway, tonight. Um, no. Tonight, I would have done. I would have done the shadows tonight because it's the anniversary of the shadows tonight. No. No, it's not. It's the anniversary of Shannon's fucking birthday. It's the anniversary of her birthday. Okay, you may have found the shadows on her birthday which you didn't find the shadows someone else found them on social media you was someone suggested alan have you seen these shadows under this truck on social media to you and then you said all right thanks you deleted them this nice lady called diane you deleted her and then you took it as your own and it wasn't even all tied up and didn't even all ring true exactly the way you span it and made a load of nonsense out of it afterwards it's not the anniversary of you doing the shadows it's the anniversary of Shanann's, it's, it's her birthday. Like, how can a man so wrapped up in the case say something so self-referential on Shannon's birthday? 
I'm dyslexic, so I'm going to ask you to work it out. Maybe Anna Felaxis can help me. Let's do it this way. I just, when, like, to be honest, there are moments, you know, we take a laugh and have a laugh and stuff. And, you know, I've become late, haven't I? So Frankie Roosick and all that, you know, I've come late. I'm not in that, like, battle. But um, there are moments where I do think of, like, you know, the family. And, like, that's one of them. Like, Val put a really nice post out today on Facebook. Uh, sorry, Facebook, on YouTube post. And for once, I'm like, you know, this is actually, I think it's a bit strange to be like, you know, RIP someone I don't know millions of miles away. Do you know what I mean? It's just a bit, like, I'm not constantly RIPing all the people millions of miles away. Like, do you know, and I'm not, it's not my job to report when people die on Twitter. Do you know what I mean? Like, RIP so and so, they have just died. Like, it's not my job. Like, um, so, but I thought it was actually quite nice. Like, Val pointed out, you know, it's Shannon's birthday and, like, you know, et cetera. Like, how has he not got any sense of compassion or, do you know what I mean? It's like you'll cover that case five years. Like, today's Shannon's birthday. Like, no wonder the people that are connected with her family, you know, and her family directly, think Alan is such a vile, horrible man. <laughs> like, he just doesn't have a, an iota of the proper due compassion and care that someone that covers these topics on YouTube really should have. It's all about him, isn't it? was the murders? 2017, right? Am I right on that? The Watts murders, 2017? I did the shadows on... Shanann Watts' birthday, January the 10th. Yes? January the 10th. Happy birthday in heaven to, Sh to Shanann. This is January the 10th, their birthday. And the murder was... Two th hang on a minute. The murder was 2018. Yes? Murder was 2018, yeah. Got it. Um, NK looked them up in 2017. 2018 was the murder. Nicole Kessinger didn't look them up. Nicole Kessinger worked at the same place as Chris Watts worked and was handed a works mobile phone. And that works mobile phone had been used to search for Chris Watts and Shanann Watts about three years earlier or whatever. And when she was handed it, she used it as her works mobile phone. And later on, when they searched her works mobile phone, they found this search on the Google records on that mobile phone for Chris Watts. And they thought, this is strange that she searched for Chris Watts before she even knew who he was. And then they noted that the phone was in possession of people that worked for the company before Nicole Kessinger. And it had been used by other people that worked in HR. So it may have been that they searched for Chris as part of some form filling and exercise or even because they were friends with him. So who knows who had the phone before Nicole Kessinger? I don't. But if you did, you would go to them and ask them why they searched for Chris Watts. You wouldn't ask Nicole Kessinger because she wasn't in possession of the phone. So, January the 10th, 2000... No. No, you're going to have to help me here because I'm dyslexic. No, my head's gone. So the shadows were January the 10th, 2019, which is five years ago tonight because I'm only just getting the word in my head that it's... 24 now. I keep thinking it's 23 because I'm dyslexic. It's actually 24. That's five years today. Literally five years today, I did the shadows. And I'm not going to do it tonight because out of respect for Shanann, five years, you know, a long time, isn't it? So I think we should have a, a, a little think for Shanann. But I don't really want to do that show tonight, so I'm not going to. So let's put Shanann to one side. Let's put Shanann to one side <laughs> out of respect for her. Uh, what you mean is you did want to do that show, but because some people in your probably behind the scenes in your Spanish group said, hey, it's a bit, you know, this is Shanann's birthday. And they themselves are at least committed to this case out of some duty to Shanann. Like, you know, you unre I think Alan presented to his audience the idea that he would do five years of the shadows tonight. And they said, oh, hang on, Alan, like we're the audience and we actually have some respect for Shanann, even though you don't. So you might try and pretend to us that you do, but we some some of us do, so we don't like that idea. It's her birthday, that sounds a bit wrong. So he's decided not to do it. <laughs> and I will do this shadow, five year anniversary of the shadows, I do tomorrow. You'll do it tomorrow, exactly. <laughs> oh God. Like, these people are too easy.
this is what it is. You know, I do on Super Chuffer, I do body language analysis, yeah? And like some of these videos, uh, Russell Brand, Philip Schofield, to an extent, Holly Willoughby and Alison Hammond, that was a funny one, but um, uh, scrolling down for another body language analysis, Paul Ansel, first impressions. I do some of them live as well, don't I? So I did some of them as lives. Um, that Derek Johnson, actually, I should finish that, shouldn't I? There's still like one part left of that, if I'm right. Um, Penny Fletcher there, uh, Nicola Bully's friends, Emma White. You know, these people, this body language analysis, uh, statement analysis as well, the whole shebang, like looking into things, having that grounding in watching all the YouTube greats over the years, of course, but also my own study, having been to university and studied psychology and social psychology, been interested in this for years, read books that David, uh, David D Darren Brown recommended on hypnosis, for example, um, like looked into the different studies as to why people do X, Y, Z, have a proper interest in it. I'd say like, you know, it's a bit of a challenge. It's a bit of a challenge, you know, picking someone out like Paul Ansel, Alison Hammond, Penny, whoever, whomever, and trying to read the body language you know, do that task. It's a little bit of a challenge, isn't it? It's like a puzzle. It's like a bit of a puzzle. And uh, these people, this man and Luke, it's like a Rubik's cube with two cubes. <laughs> right, you know, it's just like, ch ch it's done. It's not a puzzle. <laughs> so fucking transparent. Shanann would have turned 40 today. So try and show some compassion here, Alan, because you understand that the audience want you to do so. So do some minor thing. But bear in mind, he's a narcissist, so he doesn't really have any feelings in this way. His feelings are towards himself and how he's going to look in this position. So let's see how he can handle trying to do something compassionate or say something compassionate. This thing in the, the shadows I do tomorrow. Shanann would have turned 40 today. Saddest thing in the... But that's not the show I'm doing tonight. I'm doing um, the McCann's. He gave it the hmm. Like he gave it a face, like a very acting. Would have turned 40 today. Hmm. Uh, sh shucks. Hmm. Hmm. That's hmm. Saddest thing, in it? Saddest thing, in it? But that's not. Anyway. The show I'm doing tonight. I'm doing um, the McCann's. God rest you, Shanann. Like, you know, if she's watching this, I hope she gets a laugh out of some of it. Because, like, you know, it can't all be serious, can it? But fucking hell, this man's an arsehole. You probably hate me more than Shanann's brother. I have uncovered so much on the McCanns that I made over 200... Oh, I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm just going to tell you the truth. I made over 200 videos about the McCanns on... Did he really, though? Did he really? It might not be the truth. And he hasn't uncovered anything about the McCanns. Other people have uncovered things about the McCanns. Alan has found them on the internet and read them out on a YouTube channel. A lot of his early work was critiqued because there was a whole Facebook group of people doing work on the McCanns. And Alan basically used their content and they weren't monetizing it. And he did. Uh, there's so much said about the McCanns. Richard D. Hall sparked off... Like 80% of what Alan says about the McCanns is from Richard D. Hall and the other 20% is from Lizzie's Facebook group. <laughs> like It's just fucking ridiculous. Oh, and he watched a couple of documentaries that he then played on the fucking show and showed you. Like He's got nothing original of himself of any, any original anything to add. He's just a conduit for third-hand information. Like, he's just rubbish. On, on YouTube. I had a number of trolls that came from Facebook complaining that I was making money at a Maddie McCann. No, they had a Facebook group to do research to try and forward the case. And you used it for your own content. And they hated you for it. And they had a legitimate grievance because the rule was in the Facebook group, we're all trying to do the best for Maddie. No one's monetizing the content. And you said, yeah, is it? Right, fucking idiots. I'll have that and I'll monetize it. Because right. no one is allowed to make money at the McCann case. No one. It's not that, Alan. It's not that. You're misrepresenting the truth again, you big liar. Apart from the McCanns and Richard E. Hall and Peter Hyatt and anybody else they say can, but I can. I they did their own original work. Peter went to 
Peter Hyatt did the full statement analysis. Richard D. Hall went to Pride de Luz. You sat there and watched it and then used it as the basis for your content. I'm not allowed to make money at a McCann. And they, they set up groups to stop me because I was making money at McCann's. One particular lady you know about to this day hates my guts. Lizzie. But I'm only trying, the same way I'm trying to get NK investigated, I'm trying to get the McCann's investigated. It's not the end of the world, is it? I mean, like, it's not you're not trying to get anyone investigated. You're trying to make money out of grifting people on the internet to subscribe to your patron. Like a, a monster. I want the McCann's interviewed. Listen, for the other things you do, you are conceptually a monster. Someone saying this about TikTok, like you've been on TikTok earlier, have you, Alan? Been on TikTok, done your TikTok show earlier. So young. This, so, I'm not trying to cause yeah, Alan alarm and distress. He's not allowed to watch YouTube, so he's not allowed to watch my YouTube uploads. I'm not uh, trying to cause Alan alarm and distress. I'm saying he used the word monster, and people think of paedophile nonces as monsters. And then here's a man saying this. So you make up your own so, mind. So young. Anyway, it's so young, isn't it? Ticky tocky, so young. So young. Anyway, it's so young, isn't it? Ticky tocky, so young. So young. So young. Okay. Um, and as for making money out of Madden, like, big upset. Yeah. Uh, like, in truth, though, like, if someone does some investigative journalism or puts together a good YouTube stream, like, I've done content about Madeline. I've done body language reaction to her parents. I've done reviewing the book that the, um, policeman wrote and I've done reviewing Peter Hyatt's statement analysis because I think it's all good content and if I make money off it good for me because I add a bit you know I add my own bit I add some value as a broadcaster hopefully uh, by summing it up in a sort of sequential series without doing like in my opinion and I'm just blowing my own trumpet here but doing the playlist of Madeline McCann videos that I did just blowing my own trumpet a little bit by having them there as like nine videos I feel that someone in 2024, even a younger person who wasn't alive back then, can say, hey, what's this Madeleine McCann thing about? And they can say, well, here's the book they tried to ban, written by the detective through the prism of a streamer who's sort of reading it through and talking it and making it clear. So there's a whole series. And then you've got interviews and embedded confessions. That was something that went on on the internet. And I talked about the players like Richard D. Hall and the people that were doing it. And then my own body language analysis. And finally, thus, with Stephen the Dead, 2024, 2023 Forensic Psychology, Madeleine McCann. There's a good series there. But I don't feel compelled to like try and ring her out for money every day of the week and make two videos about the Idaho 4 every day. You know, it's like, as a content creator, you have to know where the, the, like, the balance is for like taste decency and your own like how can you do this yourself like how can alan be doing this about madeline mccann in 2024 like it's like haven't you said it like how can you live in your own world of narcissistic delusional repetition it's it's kind of like what i want nk interviewed and for that i've been crucified i say crucified because my life has taken so many bad turns the last year so many that it's put me in depression, anxiety. You've caused it all yourself. Without any of your actions, none of this would have happened. <laughs> You've caused it all yourself. Spiteful, mm. malicious, vindictive, nasty, seedy, aggressive, narcissistic, uh, petty, vile, selfish, greedy, counterfeiter thief narcotics he's admitted himself to his own narcotic use um just you know there's so many things isn't there the alcoholism the grifting for the paintings the i just don't even uh, the, the the brothers raised fifty thousand pounds to take me to court to ruin me to take every penny i've got and it's not about his sister. He wants to take me to court for slander yeah. of him. And he's going to win. I've never spoke to him. But anyway, that's by the way. So apart from that... Interesting he brings that up again. I mean, he obviously does every time he talks about... Um, but this is supposed to be about the McCanns, but it's interesting that he brings that up again. Um, I hope, I hope, I hope it's going to... Oh, God, I've got all the cat hairs on my face now. Fuck. I hope, I hope, I hope it's going to really get moving soon because there was a recent movement, wasn't there? There was a recent green movement on the case. Um, if we quickly look at 
Rusik versus Vinicum. One of my favourite. Oh, hold on. It looks like there aren't many great matches for my search. Why not? Why not? Oh, is it Cohen? Wait, let's do it like this. All right, cat, you silly cat. Cohen versus Vinicum, maybe. Yeah, here it is. Uh, last activity was 13th of December on this, on the old case. Litigant in person, Alan Vinicum. Um, so it was filed in November 22, but it's recently had activity in 13th of December 2023. So hopefully that means things are moving even, you know, who knows. Um, I won't get in trouble talking about him. No, like, uh, we have agreed, haven't we? We've agreed that, me and the police have agreed that I have freedom to speak on the internet. I'm not intending to cause Alan Vinicum alarm and distress. I'm not doing anything that the normal person might think is crude or abusive. I'm not waging a campaign of harassment against Alan Vinicum. In fact, I don't think Alan Vinicum should be watching my material because it's directed at us to have fun and chat about. If he puts something on the internet, we can critique it. And he's not allowed on YouTube. So this is on Twitch where it will become subscribers only. And he's busy doing his own thing tonight. So I don't expect him to watch and he won't be able to watch it on YouTube because he's banned. So no, I don't think I will get in shite about talking about him. Um, if I crossed the line and engaged in a campaign of harassment, if I went to his house or I called him up or I, um, uh, you know, X, Y, Z, if I threaten him directly and if I intend to cause him alarm and distress, which I don't, then we could talk about those things. But thankfully, we can't. And if he uh, tried to push it on me and tried to pin it on me and sent the police more stuff, they'd go around his house, not mine, because he's been flagged as a wrong one. Uh, I was the one that vindicated his sister five years ago today that she couldn't have killed the children. And for that, they... I'm not going to wave it in everyone's face, though, and do a big episode called Alan Vinicum the Giant Pedo and, like, try and, like, you know, push the boundaries here. Um, it's just, we got talking about this tonight. Like, I watched Luke and it was awful. I felt like watching the granddaddy of it all. And here he is just being himself a bit. We're not going to watch the whole hour and 20 minutes. Like, there's no way we're doing that. <laughs> Destroyed me. But it's interesting to hear him talking about being destroyed. My life has taken so many bad turns the last year. Your life took so many bad turns the last year. What happened was, Alan, you were riding high on the crest of a wave talking about Nicola Bully on the internet. Despite everything having gone down the pan, Nicola Bully case resurrected it, didn't it? Resurrected it all for you. Suddenly there was a light at the end of the tunnel again, and it was not a train this time, but it was Nicola Bully, wasn't it? And then through that process, you stole my content and started a fight with me on the internet, spoke down to me and acted like a big chuffer. And now this happened. <laughs> We critiqued all your work regularly and you didn't like it and you got really, really eggy until you made uh, homophobic and other kinds of slurs and then you got banned off YouTube for being a really bad person and it's your own fault, all of it. So people like to see a narcissist fall from any position, not being the tallest poppy because you bought that, you paid for those subs, but uh, being the biggest idiot, maybe. So many that it's put me in depression anxiety you don't know what depression is what it really is in my opinion and i'm talking to him as if i'm talking to him because i'm critiquing the video not because i'm really talking to him in my opinion what alan has is remorse for he's feeling bad because he feels bad because he's not the big chuffer anymore and he looks stupid so he feels bad that's not depression he's not got much money that's not depression that's he feels bad because he's responsible for his actions and now he should feel bad uh, the, the, the brothers yeah big up said southeast i don't think i'll be getting in trouble no no in fact whilst we all agreed i'm going to pivot past this and move on like before we got into it with the police you know i'd already decided that alan was boring and not the focus of my attention for the next year um it just happens to be happening now so we're just chatting raised fifty thousand pounds to take me to court to ruin me to take every penny i've got and it's not about his sister he wants to take me to court for slander of him. I've never spoken to him. But anyway, that's by the way. So apart from that, I was the one that vindicated his sister five years ago today that she couldn't have killed the children. And for that, they destroyed me. But you know what? They can't. How many times they knock me down, I get up. They can knock me down every day, I'll get up. And it's the same with the McCanns. 
There was one nice lady called Sweepy Face, lovely lady, lived in the, out in the country, and they decided to make an example of her, like I've been made an example of by Shanann's family. I don't know if I want to say her real name or not. It's a nice lady called Sweepy Face, not a real name, it's a name on Facebook. And uh, Martin Blunt, Sky TV, turned up in her village and said, why do you keep picking on the McCanns? What's this nonsense? Little tiny village. is on YouTube. But they've shut me up. That's fair enough. But at least I've still got gin. In my eyes, it proves Martin Smith correct. Now, Martin Smith and his family. I think I better tell you Martin Smith's story first, so then you believe me when I show you my proof, yeah? Martin Smith's the guy who said that he saw someone carrying a child like Madeline on the beach. And I don't, you know, I factor that in and say that's a fair shout. You know, it might have been Jerry running around down there. But it doesn't matter now, it's 2024. So to give you context, and if you didn't watch, how many of you were on TikTok just now? None How of them. How many of you are on TikTok? Just like, just, there's like a core group of your people that you force and bully around and they have to go and watch this and that, but nobody's come over from TikTok because they just saw your TikTok. Any of you? God, thirsty. I should have a glass, shouldn't I? This is like gin. Gin, yeah? Is it? It looks like ginger beer or something that might be a mixer. Oh. oh, yeah. You can leave your hat on. Why are you getting naked? I've got lots of hats, Derek. <laughs> okay, so here we go. I'm going to put it to you tonight. On this, in front of you, small audience of 60 people, I used to get up to 2,000 on YouTube, but they shut me up. That's fair enough, but at least I've still got it there. Right. I want you to take this in and take notes like you used to. Remember the remember the COVID days when we're on our own? Do you know, I had six people write to me and say that we saved their lives, myself and the Spanners, because the Spanners treat them like family. Don't start this. Don't start this. During COVID, people found it hard. They used online communities to get through. If you weren't there, Alan, they would have found something much more wholesome and better. But sadly, you filled the void for some people. And whilst you sucked the money out of their wallets, you know, relishing and joy, in, in joy about the super chats, you also maybe, not you, but some of the spanners, maybe helped, maybe helped, I would say, maybe one or two people and through some difficult times. And you're taking it on as if you're as, not asthma, uh, mental health Jesus, saving people's mental health throughout the, the... Like, it's not what happened at all. You were in it for the grift and the monies and you saw COVID as a great boon time, a great boom time and a great boon for you. And you've said as much. We've got the clips of it. We've got the clips of you saying, you know, good old COVID, those were the days. And most people didn't feel like good old, good old COVID, those were the days. This is just you recontextualizing all loads of nonsense from the past into something that sounds better for you because you think people on TikTok might come and watch and you can just wreck on the past. Myself and the Spanners saved at least six people from on alive in themselves. At least six. During that, COVID was a time of reflection when you're looking at four wars and you're on your own. And there was so many... One of them was him. Suicides. But we saved five or six people. And if you don't believe me... Five or six now so obviously the number's gone up since the last time he talked about it from i can remember where he said one or two or like one or somebody sent me an email now it's five or six it was six now it's five or six it's just lies any of the spanners here from the old days they will concur what i'm saying we used to get thanked all the time and if anything, he's going to drive people into a position of wanting to fucking end it all because it's awful content. And at the end, he has to bring them back round. So that's the only thing. These were the days when Chicken Lady was here, of course. So she's not here to. No, she's poorly. But... Anyway, so the Smith family. Why was he so. <sighs> about Chicken Lady then? They go on holiday to Prayer de Luz the same week. The same week. As all right, this bollocks now. He states the individual. Is he lying? You are. Oh, what's happening here? What the fuck is this? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on, hang on. We've got the YouTube premium on again. We've got the YouTube premium on again, Alan. 
Obviously, you don't have YouTube Premium because you're not allowed on YouTube. So whose is this account called Painful? It's called Painful. If I scroll down there, you'll see at the bottom there, underneath the rumble numbers, it says Painful. It's the account P Painful. That account, Painful, you know, someone needs to clip and I need to clip this and send it to YouTube. Alan is banned from YouTube. Alan Vinicom is banned. He's using a YouTube premium account, premium account on Rumble and broadcasting on Rumble videos that he uploads to a, or somebody uploads to a YouTube premium account so he can watch them on Rumble. And this is a premium account, GB. It's got a P and it's called Painful. And he's using it to ban Evade by uploading and watching you, the videos for his Rumble account, for his Rumble show. That's Alan Vinicum. Let's try running it from the start. But it's not going to work from here. Doesn't look good, does it? How weird is that? Is it possible to stop me? Is it possible? Can't be, can it? Grime. <laughs> the paranoia setting in as he thinks have YouTube themselves stopped him from viewing YouTube videos with an IP ban because he's banned from YouTube you know he's thinking to himself have they IP banned me Eddie and Keela was the turning I'm point not in the case stop it. to convince the Portuguese PJ to uh, have a look at the villa Oh, man. Getting annoyed now. See, I listen, can't. this is really important as well. He's getting annoyed now. So it's not that I have to wage a campaign of harassment to make Alan angry. Alan is angry Alan. He just is angry Alan. And I just report on it, don't I? There's no reason for this. Well, the importance of this was not lost. So I won't get it on my small screen. Please. It's gotta be it's gotta be Rumble's end. Yeah. I'm not going to be beaten. You won't beat me, Mr. Rumble, or whoever it is doing this to me. You won't beat me. <laughs> is he talking to them directly in the camera? Like, like he thinks they're watching him and they're pressing a button and causing him these problems. You're not going to beat me, Mr. Rumble, or whoever is watching. You're not going to beat me. That's some sense of, that is some level of delusion. And I was about to say, I'm sorry that tonight's stream tonight has become a sort of dirge of bitterness from my end. Do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, this is bad. I'm saying it's bad because I'm watching stuff that's bad and telling you it's bad. But um, like this is now, you know, livened it up a bit with a bit of good old fashioned buffoonery comedy. <laughs> It's not fucking Mr. Rumble pressing a button on you, is it, Alan? What it is, is you haven't got adequate broadband to be watching a video and streaming at the same time. You're not supposed to be on YouTube Premium because you're banned from YouTube, so that's bad. Watching unlisted videos on YouTube Premium that you've uploaded from other sources so you can view them on your channel through Rumble, which is the way you use YouTube as a sort of video service. Like instead of watching a video on YouTube, you download it, upload it to your own channel, and then watch it on Rumble. Like uh, on, You watch it on YouTube on your Rumble. Um, doing that's not working for you because you haven't got adequate bandwidth. And that's just about it. And I don't think you're prepared to spend the money to get good internet to do this, the job that you want to do. Um, but Alan, in his delusion, thinks that someone in Team Rumble is pressing a button. <laughs> and they're not going to beat him. You know, he's not going to bow down and kowtow to them. Have a look at the villain. Alan's dressed in his uh, pusher gear, isn't he? I'm not going to be beaten. You won't beat me, Mr. Rumble, or whoever it is doing this to me. You won't beat me. Are you all right? Sounds like the, <laughs> the cry... The delusional cries of a uh, fading narcissist. I'll do it somehow. 
on Mr. Amaral. Taken from his book. You see, why I question is, if Painful is not Alan, you know, if that YouTube account is not Alan Vinicom, the YouTube account Painful, there, uploading this unlisted video, then they are ban evading for Alan by uploading him to YouTube. So that account needs to go, doesn't it? YouTube Premium. And if it is Alan, then he's ban evading and uploading to YouTube. Whoever's doing it is uploading Alan content to YouTube and he's banned from YouTube. So that needs to go, YouTube. A lie. Okay. Right. They think they can win. I'll, I'll beat them. Can involve Somehow us. I'll beat them. 6 p.m. ish. Knock on the door. <laughs> right, that ain't going to work. So I'm going like, to. Let me make this clear as well. Right, this is five years on from Alan's discovery of the shadows, which was a big moment for him on YouTube, in his opinion, where he was literally, in truth, projected into this stratosphere of YouTube numbers. People were watching his show, talking about him and his opinion, and he was riding the wave of YouTube trend for a moment there, wasn't he? Five years down the line, he's on Rumble, his screen is stuck, while he tries to play you a video from a YouTube premium account that he's not allowed to have because he's banned off YouTube. <laughs> it's all fucked. It won't move. It's all stuck. His broadband is awful. He's got less than 60 people there, of, and of which probably 50 are bots. Like, do you know what I mean? I, I don't know the numbers, but like, is he banned indefinitely? Yeah, forever. He's banned forever. Forever, Ed. He's contravened the terms of service to the extent where he's been properly banned for the protection, the safety of the other users. In YouTube's words, the safety of other users, other users. So if you, but what I want you to consider is this five years aspect. Like if you're doing something and it's going really well and it's five years down the line, you would think that it wouldn't be at this level of shitness, would you? You would think it hasn't gone so far this down the toilet that you'd at least have been able to maintain the same standard as what you were once doing, even if it's five years out of date and old, at least maintain the standard. Instead, Alan has gone totally down the toilet in this time. And the five-year anniversary of the Shadows and Shannon's birthday, she's going to be laughing at Alan if she, you know, looking down from heaven because he's gone totally to shit in those five years, hasn't he? He's not gone from strength to strength. He's not maintained. He's not plateaued or anything like that. You know, he's not even a little bit further ahead than he was. Like, he's a lot further behind than he was, isn't he, really? It's, it's gone very badly for him in those five years. And this is a great example of it. He can't even run a, a, an, an episode of his own stream. <laughs> to do it old school. Oh, it's jammed up again. I... This is really crazy. I'm at a sink. The film is jammed, but I'm still going to win. I won't let them stop. We're going to watch it on my on my video here. I'm going to do it with you. This will be good. I'm not not going to show it. They're not going to beat me. The oldest of this was not lost on Mr. Amaral. Take from his book, The Truth But A Lie. List. 6 p.m.-ish. The inspector's knock on the... Kate and Jerry were giving the twins a bath in the exterior pool. Surprisingly, they both reacted well to the search warrant. And a forthright and Keeler to make sure. This is five years of progress for Alan Vinicom since he discovered the shadows in his words in his life. This is five years of progress for Alan Vinicom. No previous mayor. So we have a secure location, everything taken from the villa inboxes safely to be laid out and checked one by one. So the dog's alert to the T-shirt. You can clearly see it comes here. Are you ready? Oh, God. There is no leading the thing. They've got me beat in there. So Kate and Jerry were giving the twins a bath in the exterior pool. Surprisingly, they both reacted well to the same. They got me beat, guys. I don't know how I can do this. 
something seriously I'll try one more time closing it down bear with me see if you bear think if you thought Luke was bad because he couldn't connect up a video call and do it as a stream <laughs> here's the granddaddy of fucking up your own life to show him how it's properly done <laughs> Not just your live stream, but your life. <laughs> oh, Alan, what does it feel like to truly fail? To know in your heart. And I'm saying this again, not to Alan, because I don't expect he can watch this on YouTube when I upload it to YouTube. Or I don't think he's going to be subscribed to my channel when this becomes subscribers only on Twitch. So, But Alan, I wonder what it feels like, Mr. Alan. To have fucked up your life so hard and to know truly in your own heart of hearts that you you are a failure and that you fail on every basic level all the time over and over and it's your own aggression and narcissism and vindictiveness that causes the failings and make it so like bring it into such sharp focus and make it so hard for you to deal with when it happens with me talk amongst yourselves I'm not one to give up. Everything's going, everything's wrong here. It's like, technically. Do anything. I don't know what to do next. Uh, I think I'll have to shut down and update and restart. It's going to be four minutes. This video, at the current status has 173 views 173 views we're watching it just after it's dropped as you saw earlier in today's stream the uh, peaks and troughs of those graphs it can't get more than 500 views this can't like, it's had its number of views that it's fresh and new and it's an hour old it's had those views they've come out to total about 100 and something if it continues to climb and reach further numbers like steady consistent it's because he's view botting this is the live stream the thing with the eye is that he puts on the green screen and the green screen takes everything that's green and turns it into green screen. So a reflection in his glasses of his own screen that's green, will because he plays poker on the screen, so he's got green on the screens, will look like green screen to the computer and it will fuck his eye up. Um, but also he might have glaucoma and it might make his eye look funny and then the green screen might read that. I don't know. But what's happening is anything that's you know background that needs to be deleted is being deleted and it reads that part of his face and deletes it. Um, that's what's happening there. Oh, he's gone. He gone. I'll skip it, obviously. We're not going to just sit and watch this. One minute, two minutes, three minutes. Yeah, well. Right. And you must consider, even if people were watching that stream, they would leave. Because no one's going to sit for three minutes and wait for this man to turn up again, are they? Not after that. Okay, I'm my back. And look, when it, when he's back and it's still shit, like you're just going to think this I'm isn't back. worth watching. I can see clearly now. The rain is gone. <laughs> it's like a laugh about it. I mean, I'm not dissing anyone for having bad internet, but it's the prerequisite of a live streamer that you have the facility to live stream. <laughs> Right, I've got it all up and running, I hope. I don't know. I don't yeah. trust anybody anymore. Don't trust don't anybody. Trust In the exterior oh. pool. Surprisingly, they both reacted well. What was well. that? Hang on. What was that? Give me that again, Alan. I think I'm back. I can see clearly now. The rain is gone. <laughs> it's like a laugh about it. Right, I've got it all up and running, I hope. I don't know. I don't trust anybody anymore. Well, I trust myself. Oh, no. I trust myself. You're the one that's fucking it all up. 
surprisingly, they both reacted well. And a forthright and Keeler to make sure there's no previous smear. So we have kitchen. Everything taken from the villa in boxes safely to be laid out and checked one by one. It's still awful, Alan. You see that T-shirt there? That dog is telling you a dead body has been in contact with it. All right, I want you to write that down. Write, write that down. Are you ready? I, 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 there is no leading him to anything. So, Eddie and Keela have spent hours looking at all their clothes and taking no interest at all until one... This is ridiculous, right? What it is, is it's from shaky cam bollocks of the cadaver dogs. There's a series of videos of the cadaver dogs at work, and it's a bit shaky cam. And it doesn't show the entire process, and it doesn't show, like, what you have to do is ask the man who ran the cadaver dogs what his opinion is of his search, and, you know, and he'll give you that opinion. You can't say, on that shaky cam, that dog was barking. So this means that, because you're not the dog's handler, and you're not there on the search, and you're not really, you know, it's just on some shaky cam, that dog was lying down, it's barking there. And I would agree, it looks like it's indicating on that. But you don't know the whole process you don't know what's really going on and then obviously from that we do listen to what the cadaver dog man said and we do think that the, the dog was alerting but it's this way alan has of showing you one thing and then telling you well because of x y z p q r t and like for fuck's sake alan a certain box the clothing of um the mccann's themselves so they have to choose off you go can you find the scent of cadaver? Cadaver. No doubt he, no doubt he can, because we know he does. You see, nothing, right? And people will say, oh, Grimes is making him bark to certain things. No, he's not. They're lining up boxes and boxes of clothes from the apartment. He's not alerting to any of these, is he? None of them, right? I want That's, you to remember that. But what to? He's not he picks up a blue shot. Right, what's in the boxes, though, Alan? <laughs> Them massively alerts to Sean's little red. Yeah, they are in this particular little bit of shaky cam footage. The dogs go over there and bark. That dog got yes. How's the twin touched a dead body? That's the first question. White blouse and of course the famous check trousers. This one, and then it. Alerted to Kate McCann's top, you know, white top she always wears. How do you know that the barking is alerting and that alerting isn't when they lie down in front of the item? And remember those horrible check trousers, three quarter length? It alerted to the trousers. Right, he hasn't given us a full background of the knowledge of the cadaver dogs, really, here. Like, I'm not going to carry on listening to him talk about the cadaver dogs because, for fuck's sake. Kate McCann's but, top. Nor are we going to have to because watch this. And this. Here, watch this. This is the new watch one. Watch this. That's that. Okay, I can't put this. This alert you're going to see now is not in the files because Grimes went through boxes of stuff and then he eliminated it all to the things that the dog alerted to, but he didn't write them down. And the and the Portuguese police didn't write down what the dogs alerted to. I'm telling you. It alerted McCann's white top. It alerted to us horrible check trousers, right? Let's go back again so you understand. Go on then. But it's not written down. Oh. And this is how they've got away with it. This is the important thing of all things, right? If they have Doesn't this sound like the ramblings of a delusional madman? <laughs> actually logged what the dog's alerted to, you'd have a better idea. Like, regardless of the facts of the McCann case, doesn't it just sound like, you know, it's 2024, it's January, what's, what are you doing tonight, Alan? Like, imagine you're at the pub, we're all at the pub, like, I, I'd say, what are you doing tonight? I would say to you, well, I've got my YouTube show on, and you're not going to believe this, but uh, I'm just going to be sort of playing a video game for a bit, talking about a few YouTube videos, then knocking it on the head for the night. And what Alan's going to do is he's going to say to you in the pub, I'm doing a big show about the cadaver dog and the scent on the McCann case. And they're going to say to him, is it 30 years ago? <laughs> Big ups through the mists. Is AD trying to be relevant again by doing Madeleine McCann? Um, I think tonight, 
he was going to do a big show about five years of the shadows and make a big thing about how important he is and about that's why he got kicked off YouTube. But his community rallied round and told him, shut up, it's Shannon's birthday. You're not doing that. And he said, what have I got to do instead? So he threw up this load of shit because Alan has like this... Um, it's like, imagine a record collection of, like, you know, Eddie's Vinyl Break, all those records behind him. Imagine a record collection and you've got three CDs. You've got the Chris Watts CD, Volume 1 and Volume 2, Volume 3, plus Nicole Kessinger, Outtakes and B-Sides. You've got the McCann case, that's like a box set, little box set. You've got, you know, you've got, um, he's got like three CDs. And so when he's gone round and you've listened to all of one, you take that out and you put in the other one. This is just the McCann shit again. Like, it's not like he's never said this. <laughs> This is just like Alan Phil's void of time with talking shit from years ago that no one has any care to go over again. It's not useful. It's not pertinent. This is all in, you know, the public sphere anyway. And he didn't bring it to anyone's attention in the first place. What was going on? But they didn't. They just... But don't let me down. Don't let me down. Here we go. Don't let me down. I should have continued to do it, you know. So again, as I say, this is YouTube Premium that we're watching. It's a channel called Painful with a small p, and Alan Vinicom is using it or on his show to obviate his ban. Whoever's uploading Alan Vinicom's content to YouTube is obviating his ban. Um, and maybe it's his own premium account, maybe it's someone else's, but that ban needs to extend to the YouTube account, the premium account, painful, because they are obviating Alan Vinicom's ban. Oh, it alerts to the red t-shirt. It alerts, alerts to Mrs. McCann's clothes. But for, thankfully, it's buffering what again. What else does it alert to? Well, this is the secret. I'm going to get... Can you find the scent of Calabar? No doubt, he, no doubt he can, because we know he does. You all right, Alan? Are you it's buffering again? It's not alerting to pillowcases. You're buffering now. From the bedding. None of that. No, not interested in that. This is right where it is. This is amazing. Those dogs are fantastic. Look at this, look, guys. It's not fair, is it? Not fair, you're banned on YouTube, you shouldn't be using it. Just want to get into it. Someone, someone's only this organised, can it? <laughs> Did he say someone's not on this organised? Do you think, does he think there's an organised gang of hackers making his internet slow? Because his internet's been like this for the last year and a half. Well, I've only been following him for a year, haven't I? Less than a year. Like... But the internet's like that for him because he's got shit internet. Meow. Hang on. You want to in or you want? Wait, don't, you, you mess me so much. His internet. <laughs> I'm, I'm labouring the point. Those dogs are fantastic. Look at this, look, guys. It's not fair, is it? Huh. Just want to get into it. But someone, someone's on the this organized can it delusions look at that blank that's amazing wow cia <laughs> oh thank you alan Thank you very much, Alan. Here you can see Alan Vinicom, who is banned from YouTube. Again, people should clip this and put it on Twitter and at YouTube. Um, here you can see Alan Vinicom, who is banned from YouTube. Okay, And he is ban evading by using this channel called Painful. Now, whether he owns Painful, which he's not supposed to because he's banned from YouTube, or whether Painful is one of his friends that's allowing him to use this channel, uploading content of Alan Vinicom, to YouTube, that's ban evasion. It's a premium channel and it's called Painful. And if you zoom in here, it's called at Painful Slow. And that's the channel, Painful Slow, at Painful Slow. 
So YouTube needs to ban at painful slow painful. Whoever that whoever that is. Thanks, Alan, for showing us that because it's proof that you are evading your ban on YouTube. Painful. I don't know how this is being done. Well, I've just come into the main evidence. I don't know how this is being done. He thinks it's a conspiracy. Painful. I don't know how this is being done. Well, I've just come into the main evidence. Got it. I've got his channel. It out. Is that possible? Can't Is that can't. possible? Um, I'm just going to quickly do a YouTube tweet. Um, but I haven't got the clips on it. Not a YouTube tweet, sorry. A, twi a tweet tweet. I haven't got the clips on it, but I'm just going to quickly... Um, at Team YouTube. Uh, this channel is... Alan... Vinicum ban evading so if they need the clips then I'll get them the clips as well uh, later today or if other people see that on Twitter and want to you know help to you know take someone off YouTube who rightfully shouldn't be using it am I too suspicious are you too suspicious to think that there is a clandestine group of people shutting down your internet right at the, the very moment you're going to reveal some big information that you've basically been talking about for several years anyway while you're on Rumble talking to 40 people. Like, yes, you're too suspicious. Yes, you are a delusional narcissist who's causing for trouble every pe pe trouble for people everywhere you go. Yes. <laughs> Surely this is ludicrous and like uh, entertaining to our audience to learn that Alan thinks that it might be that someone is secretly pressing a button to ruin his internet. Like, what's he doing? Being hacked by Bill Gates now? And they blacked it out. Painful. Absolutely right, Unity. I'm in for a penny and for a pound now, but yeah, I will let him get on with it. Nobody's watching, but I do want to see how this like rounds out for the rest of his show because it's fucking hilarious. And that's the you know the end of tonight's content for me. Like, you know, I'm not just going to stop this halfway through. This is a, a, a fucking joy isn't it him buff buffooning around on his rumble angry conspiratorial deluded <laughs> i don't know how this is being done but i've just come into the main evidence and they blacked it out is that possible can't be can it am i too suspicious I won't give up. <laughs> I might have to give up. If they got me beat. You know, uh, I've just got a blank screen. I've had it, haven't I? I'm just going to run the film. I'm not going to stop it. And I hope I can show you my main evidence. Oh, here's a thought. Wait, here's a thought. And obviously, again... This is a thought that I'm having to talk with you in chat about. Alan's not here. I'm not talking to Alan. I don't want to cause Alan an alarm and distress. And surely the idea that the police might be looking at you is not alarming or distressing because not having done anything wrong, I'm not worried about the police looking at me. Yeah? But uh, for Alan, like, is it possible that after recent events, the police might be looking at his stuff and that while he's using the internet and he's got his websites open and he's downloading and he's doing this and that, that maybe there's a little more traffic on his line than usual? Because maybe the police are looking at his stuff and what he's doing. You know, I wonder if that's happening. It's not working at the moment. Now I'm jammed again.
if that were happening, then it's time to go out and burn the hard drives, isn't it? And that doesn't just mean the hard drives. That means the computers, everything. He's going to have to buy himself another new laptop like the last time when he had to fight. <laughs> when that, do you remember that time when somehow it contrived? I mean, I wasn't around for this. The others would have to fill me in exactly. But somehow it contrived that there was some whiff of like Alan doing wrongdoing. And, you know, like he said, he searched the internet for child porn <laughs> and found there was none. Um, is it is it the case that Alan's going to have to burn the laptops again and get another new laptop? He was banned on 20th of September. That channel was created 24th of September. Well, it's Alan, isn't it, then? Just ban evading. Like, he'll get done for it. He'll get deleted. He'll start a new one. Right. Amazing. Amazing. It's literally jammed. I'm jammed. I'm frozen. Wow. He's gone again. He can't. He went in a tetch, didn't he? He got eggy. He got wound up, and he just fucking closed it all. Just like the whole thing gone. I'm. You didn't. You didn't hear him get into the tetch because he closed it before he did. Oh, here he is again. I don't know, guys. I've never seen anything like this. Is in he in history, a tetch? I've, I've been on this six years. I've never seen this. Well, the exact second I was going to show you the evidence, they literally blanked my screen out. Is he in a tetch? Is he doing it to himself to make himself look like he's being hacked? There's like some sort of like, you know, drama. Or is he leg legit that delusional that he thinks this is like the CIA shutting him down for exposing the dog alerting to a piece of clothing, which is video evidence that you can find on YouTube? I've never seen anything like it. I don't even know if it's possible. Oh, Kelly, did you not hear about that from Alan? Have you not heard that from Alan? Sorry. You not heard that from Alan? Uh, so I sh that. Maybe I should make more of a and thing of it. Got... But then I wouldn't want to cause the man alarm and distress, would I? Um, but checked. I'm on the internet. Oh. Sadson, what are you doing here, Alan? Oh, the cat needs to come in. The cat needs to come in. Uh, let's listen to Alan tell us again about what there is and isn't on the internet and how he knows from his mind and projects it onto AD. I've never been arrested. They've checked my computer. I've done nothing wrong. There is no child porn on the internet. I hate to warn you that. There is no child porn on the internet. I checked. I'm on the internet. So I wanted to know if Bundy was wrong. Right. So there's no child porn on the internet. Now we know that. Um, I did a whole stream on it. Uh, the. Uh, what he does is he says that it's because he wanted to see if Al Bundy was right. What happened was a little while ago, and there's a follow on stream from this. There's like two streams really that connect with it. Uh, there's this one's called Angry Alan Admits It, Must See, Armchair Detective Busted. It's an hour and 20 minutes talking about him admitting to searching for child porn on the internet. Um, but it follows on from Angry Alan Vinnikin versus the porn industry when Alan was busted for searching for Mother Licks Cun off Daughter's Face because he accidentally opened up a Google window and this thing in his search history and his get out clause for why he searched for Mother Licks Cun off Daughter's Face, which is like incest porn, I think. Um, his get out clause was he was doing a documentary about pornography and how it affects people's minds, specifically talking about Bundy as well, because Bundy... Uh, admitted to have found a porn mag in a bin somewhere before he went killing or some shit. Um, so he was he was making a documentary, he was doing research. Alan said he was doing research. And I pointed out that doing research was the same defence as uh, people like Chris Langham, who went got convicted for child sex offences, um, because he said he was doing research for a role and was doing some research. So we've got Angry Alan versus the porn industry. In that episode, we actually watch Alan's documentary, um, which is not much of a documentary, let's be fair, right? It's just some images off Google and him talking a bit about porn for 20 minutes. And then at the end, he literally plays the Bundy interview like this Bundy interview, he puts that on for 40 minutes. So he does an hour-long documentary, which is 20 minutes talking about, well, porn's bad, isn't it? Isn't it bad porn? There's loads of porn on the internet. And then there's an hour, like 40 minutes is filled with somebody else's interview of Bundy from the ages ago. So we covered that in Alan Vinnikin versus the porn industry. And it's really funny because obviously he was busted looking for creepy porn and it t he tried to blag it out like he was doing a documentary. And then when he did the documentary, it was fucking shit. 20 minutes of knocked off nonsense, um, which is probably what he was doing, you know. Uh, and then following from that, um, Alan got all eggy 
and talked about how he had been searching. Like, I didn't make him say that he would been searching for child. I didn't make him do this. Like he did this himself. Like he got all eggy and he said that. Um, oh, that's unbanned. We win. Sorry, that was the wrong one. He got all eggy and said, uh, "It's this one." Admits it. He said he'd been searching for stuff on the internet. Like he said, the police had searched his computer. He's done nothing wrong, so that's fine. And that he'd been searching for. And the reason he'd searched for it is because he wanted to see if Bundy was right. And he tried to fold it in with that. So I'm not saying that. <laughs> Good. Thank you. I really appreciate. But evidence has they is someone else but why are people checking your computer for child porn do you know what i mean like there's so many questions that arise from this and it's his own admission that he did that and i don't think anyone would admit to searching the internet for child porn uh, not only because number one i don't think many people would be doing it <laughs> i think i won't be doing it so you don't find that on my google search but isn't it like the sort of thing someone might say if the police were about to check, check your computer, because you'd think, well, no, uh, there's got to be a, a legitimate reason why I searched for it, surely. I'll, I'll give a legitimate reason. Whereas no one should be searching for it. And if you, the other thing that's important is if you do have a legitimate seat reason to search for something like that because you're making a documentary, then what you do is you go to the police and you say to them, hey, I'm doing a documentary. It contains really sensitive topics and I need to talk about and search for this issue. Can you help me? Because I don't want them to be searching for it on the internet. And they say, yes, very thankfully good that you've come to us. We do have a facility for talking about how to make difficult internet searches and talk about difficult topics and not be breaking the law. But Alan didn't do that. He just broke the law because searching for child porn on the internet, I think, is a, is a crime. Hang on. Is it a crime to search for child porn on the internet now this is a bad google search for me to write in isn't it i don't want that on my google search um the googling the term is not illegal but viewing or possessing the images is okay so googling it is not so that he didn't break the law there i was wrong um but i will say this as well right um which is that let's say he searched the internet for child porn and he finds some then what like then what <laughs> we've got to take his word for it there is none because if there is none, he's fine. He didn't find any. He's fine. But if there is some, then he might have found it and he might be lying to us as to whether he found it. Do you know what I'm saying? For you here. And this is a mass- AD. I've never been arrested. They've checked my computer. I've done nothing wrong. Done nothing wrong. Um, yeah, midnight, Kirsten Lee. Kirsten Lee. And it's pretty- There is no child porn on the internet. I hate the- Whoa, whoa, whoa. There is no child porn. I'm gonna to have to say the words. We're gonna get demonetized. Whatever. Um, there is, thank you. Enjoy your coffees. Not okay. <laughs> Here's the stuff. I saw this. Yeah. The cat needs power. Mind and projects it onto AD. Yeah. 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 So he checked. Like, that's him saying, it's not me. Like, what normal person does that? Anyway, so what you're seeing is... You're seeing the dog alert to Sean's little red T-shirt, Mrs. McCann's top, and Mrs. McCann's... Pull it together, Alan. Yeah? Pull it together. I agree you've seen that. So why is it alerting to that? Because it's been in contact with a dead body. Now you've never seen this. You this has never been it's not been put in the report. It's not in the report. That's the point. It's only on film. So there's only people like me that can work it out. And that's the, the point of it. The great Alan, the only and people like you. To show you it. And my, my we all need you to help us bust open the case. Everyone needs Alan. Alan's important. It's only people like Alan that can help fix this. It's only people like Alan that were talking about the cadaver dogs and their evidence. It's only people like Alan. Like, he didn't get this from Goncalo Amaral's book. <laughs> oh, but they didn't put it in the report. Yeah, but he did talk about it in the book. And then you didn't watch that video that was put on YouTube by somebody else. <laughs> and then watch Richard D. Hall talking about it and putting it in his content. It's only you, Alan, that can elucidate this information. The screen's being blanked and I'm being frozen.
I've never seen anything like it. And because you can't even use the internet, unfortunately, maybe we're not going to get it. <laughs> and it could be a CIA conspiracy to shut you down, or it could be because you're a massive buffoon. And when people are massive buffoons, we shouldn't follow them into the gates of hell over information and true crime on the internet. We should ignore them and leave them to be because they're not worth our time. Like This man is not going to give you any you know, intellectual insight into anything. Now like you can't get insight into a bowl of cereal. I can't open, you can't get insight into a box of cereal. Like, he's, like this man is bad <laughs> at, at the very thing that he's trying to grift money from doing. <laughs> oh dear. I'm not going to really show you my evidence. This is weird. I'm not going to give up, though. You might be here all night. Oh, God. I'm going to do it in pictures. <laughs> Picture form. <laughs> right, OK. That's what the basketball game. That's your, your game. I've got pictures. Of what? Okay. I bet he's doing his nut. So, oh, it's not even working. And no one can say this isn't perfectly deserved on the anniversary of Shannon's birthday. I, you know, no, no one can say this isn't perfectly deserved for this man to suffer after all the suffering he's put the family through. Is it? I'm not even working. Jesus. Unnecessary. Oh. I've turned everything off now. I can't show any films, but hopefully you can see me. And hopefully I'm in sync now, right? I've got to be in sync now. Oh, you're going again. I might be. No, you went out then. I might be in sync. <laughs> went back again. How is that? So what that what tells me, all this syncing issue, that tells me it's Alan and his computer and the processing, because it's not syncing the images, is it? Like the broadcaster, if it was lagging and this and that, would still potentially just lag and stutter in it. But it's syncing, that's an Alan issue. Are we as one now? Are we as one? I'm surprised he's not raging harder, to be honest. Yes. OK, so you've seen the, dog, the red top. You've seen the dog alert to the horrible check trousers and the white top. So there's the white top, and that's the style of trousers she loves. Three quarter length baggy, right? There's the white top. Proves it. There's the trousers. That the dog alerted to. Proved it. So the white top and the trousers, right? There it is. Okay. And there's proof on the floor. Interesting idea, Curious Cat, is you might be using the green screen because he's hiding somewhere else and maybe that IP's been bad. I actually think he's just using the green screen because he's got that microphone next to him um, still. And he's just, like, when he goes away and does, like, broadcast from elsewhere, he doesn't take all the kit, he just, you know, goes. Uh, but maybe. Uh, but I, I actually just feel that um, he's got problems with the internet because the internet's shit. Uh, and he hasn't taken the reasonable steps while he's had the money to fix it and, you know, take those other steps to be... Like he should be sat behind a nice, expensive computer that can handle pretty much anything you can throw at it. He should be able to open up more windows than Buckingham Palace like I can. He should be connected to a decent broadband. You know, he should have had the people out, fix the box, all that business. And it, like he's a professional broadcaster that's had thousands of pounds off people, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of pounds off people through his hands. How is he doing this? Terrible picture, but you can just about see check trousers yeah 
like maybe he's decided because he's like his money has gone down, hasn't it? Like since he came off YouTube, he's get got less money. So maybe he's not paying for the the top. Like maybe he was paying for better internet before, and he's had to cut that back. You know, maybe this is going on his four G or something. I don't know, but um, for whatever reason, in my opinion, first of all, he's got one big. I think the introduction of the green screen, his computer can't handle whatever's going through it, and it's processing power isn't up to speed so when he also asks it to watch a video and like what you're doing as a broadcaster like your computer's handling two jobs at once like you could have i shouldn't tell him this because he has actually got two computers but um one computer processing and powering the stream and then another computer doing all the things you want to do like watching videos and stuff but alan's doing it all on one laptop and it's just not handling it i don't think like the bandwidth the processing power all of it it's all coming together for a massive fail uh, and he doesn't know what he's doing or how to fix it but he doesn't even if he did he hasn't got the money to upgrade the setup now because he's had the money and he's pissed it away check trousers yeah he did have to bin off the rum the green screen earlier didn't he like for some reason he's forgotten that he had to bin off the green screen when he started rumble because it was causing problems so my 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 you know I, my guess is it's just mainly the green screen and the computer chugging away trying to handle a processing issue um but then on top of that coupled with the fact his broadband is not like, whatever internet he's got it's not fast enough for him to both download and like he's he's effectively asking to stream something incoming and upload it straight to as it comes out you know what i mean isn't he by watching these videos so he's just not got the like the bandwidth the power and i don't think computers can handle it yeah white top or maybe steve's downstairs uh using the gas fire maybe steve's on his electric toothbrush and he's messing it up now i've got to show you the film and i hope, I hope that i don't think you could really see it but i try you are right though he, he could legit just be somewhere else taking the microphone i don't think he'd take the stand in the microphone and all that with him though um and he's got he's in the armchair as well so i think he's in his old you know his usual spot in like pitch of form well, i did want to question like it isn't that important to him to do it but because he has this sense of anonymity by using the green screen and it just being the armchair that armchair is pretty easy to source so what he could do if he wanted to is he could go on holiday and he could take his normal stuff and an extra suitcase and you could say well that suitcase is a bit big and he's like yeah i'm actually shipping an armchair with me not the whole thing just the back and the seat and when i get there i'm going to sit on this and go on a live stream people are going to think i'm at my old house like they're not going to know as long as they can see this and this um but it's a bit of an effort and i don't think he'd bother and what's the point but you know you feet con conceivably you could do that um, but I don't think I don't think he's doing that. Let's see if I can get you to watch this. Like maybe he should be calling his internet service provider at this point and having a word with them. But what they're going to do is explain to him that his kit and like they're going to say that like run a speed test and if the speed test comes out acceptable it's all your fault <laughs> leave us alone and if the speed test doesn't they're gonna to have to send people out to try and upgrade and fix up and it might be that he's at the limit of his you know what he's asking his broadband to do so he's got no right to ask for any upgrade but what they will do is they'll try and upgrade and sell him some sort of upgrade won't they and he won't be wanting to do that because he's got no money so like like i say years ago when like the, the joke is this is five years on from the shadows and back then he had all the money to upgrade all the kit you know he's had all the money to do that he's gone on holiday and played poker and stuff this year he spent oh whoops this year he spent the money that um he could have what have i done this for he spent the money that he could have spent upgrading all this kit he spent that going and playing poker so it's his own fault Oh my God, it's poor, isn't it? I've got to turn the green screen off. That's what's the green screen. I, you know what? I'm, I'm one for not giving up, yeah? Turn off the green screen. This, the green screen was a problem. Let's see if that makes any difference to the... No, nope, still... <laughs> You've got the green screen still on you, Burke. Oh, don't give up. Oh, wait, wait. If he thought he turned it off and his eyes changed, hang on. Look at this. Yes. 
Oh. He's showing the phone. You can see the phone, right? Oh, my God, it's pouring it. I've got to turn the green screen off. Got to turn the green screen off. I, you know what? I'm, and he presses something and something changes. I'm one for not giving up, yeah? Turn off the green screen. The green screen was a problem. He's clicking something now. And now it's like something has changed, yeah? And what I can see is the eyes don't pick out the green screen anymore. The eyes aren't doing it anymore. It's not in his glasses anymore. But look sense. at this. In his eyes, you can see the green. Yeah, look at this. On his eyes, you can see the green. That before was being picked up by the green screen and it looks through it and sees green screen. You can see that green reflection, which we assume is a gambling website on one of his windows open because green background poker or bet 365 um, but now what's happened is he's taken off one layer of green screen we know he has because it's not looking through his glasses anymore right so he's taken off one layer of green screen but the background hasn't changed that's still on a green screen but now the phone has changed now you can't see the phone properly you can see through the phone so we're still on a green screen it's just that Alan had two green screens running at the same time. Unbeknownst to anyone, including himself, Alan's got two green screen effects running at the same time. He hasn't actually got a green screen, bear in mind. So he's not got a green screen. So it's not really green and lights and you know all that. It's not really a green screen. What it is, is he's running a green screen effect. And it takes out the background and it replaces it automatically. Because his background is white, isn't it? Not green. Like if I turn this on, you can see my background disappears through the magic of green screen technology. Look at that. Green screen. Because it actually is a screen that's green. And unbeknownst to me all night, I've been leaving my filter on as well. So let me change this and you know, reveal the truth. Um, turn that off. There you go. Look, green. It's a screen. And it's green. Wee. And I can turn this off. You know, green screen technology. But Alan doesn't have that. He hasn't invested in that. What he's got is just StreamYard takes out the background for you and replaces it automatically. And somehow he contrived to have that on twice. And it was fucking it up even further. <laughs> but I think what he had, he had to do it so he could do things like show you his phone, which he now can't do. It's like layers of fuck up. <laughs> one after the other, isn't it? One on top of the other. Like, just simply one green screen effect is causing him a problem showing you his phone now. So he must have done another filter on top that, like, you know, this other filter... Maybe it wasn't a green screen. Maybe it was just the filters to do his face and his teeth and all the stuff he does. But whatever the other filter was, was allowing you to see the phone at least. And now that's not working. No, still... <laughs> oh. And his chair's disappeared behind him as he leans forward because it's not green screen. It's... Uh, StreamYard is trying, like the, the computer process is saying, this is you, you're a human being. I'm an art artificial intelligence and I can recognize you, the human being. You are in the foreground, you're the human being. And everything else behind you is the background, that's gonna go. It's not green screen, which chromas out the color green. It's stuff that's behind you has gotta go, yeah? Um, and I, pred I predict the one that he had on before that was going through his glasses, taking that green color and going through it, that was real green screen. And it doesn't work for the background because the background's not green. And Alan just thinks the background and the green screen are the same thing. So he's put a green screen effect. It does nothing because his background is not green. So then he finds another effect that puts a background change. He puts that on, it works. And now he's got two effects running. One of them says green screen, but he's doing basically nothing. And the other one is a background changer that's not a green screen because <laughs> he doesn't have one. Don't give up. Layers of filter here. And he still hasn't worked out how to turn off the damn filter that's causing the problems. Oh, there it goes. Now then. Oh, look, he does have a green screen. I stand corrected. I stand corrected. He does have the green screen. Of course he does. I'm an idiot. In the past, I've seen it in the background many a time. Why was I saying that in the first place? Of course he's got a green screen. So why is he using the filter that just filters out the background? <laughs> See, I, I fell into the trap of making logical sense there. Now, you know the thing that blurred out the chair when he leant forward? That's background removal. That's not green screen. He was using black background, remo background removal despite having set up a green screen. <laughs> what a palaver. Let's see if we can get a picture of that. 
Yes. All right. All right. All right. So the dogs are looking everywhere and he's not alerting to anything. So he picks the dog up and puts it back, lays down loads of stuff and not alert to any of these things, but it alerts to what? The red top. Well, I can't see what that is. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's I, it's a red something. And look at this. What's it alerting to there? A, a white top. It's alerting to a T-shirt. Maybe those little trousers. No one ever noticed that. It alerts to a T-shirt. I don't know. It, those... it put the T-shirt in his mouth and went like that. But I don't know, you know, what dog alert language is. I don't know whether that counts. Close. It doesn't just alert. It's in the box. There's a box. So we now have... You're right, Alan. It's jerky, jerky, herky, jerky. And a white... This has got to go down as one of the worst efforts of a stream I've um, ever seen. That's what they took. Various, various clothes. Like, can you under, like everyone can agree how absolutely bad this is, isn't it? Holding up your phone to the screen. Okay. And that so, was, and that just faded to the actual website, which is. Um, we can PJ files, uh, which is this website. It just faded. Look, there it is. You can see it. Yeah, you can see it there. McCann PJ files, official inquiry files and documents. So that's where people get their stuff from. You look through the, the, the files. Uh, Alan's not discovering something that's new that you've never seen before that's not available on the internet. He's using uh, check the challenges website. And, oh. and here, that's what they took. Various, various clothes. There it is. Okay, so. I mean, that's the right place to go to look through those things, but it's just interesting that he says, here's something that you've never seen before. I'm breaking the case wide open. This is brand new evidence. And he's found it on the internet. <laughs> like, available for everyone to search through. Now then. Let's see if I can find the main bit of my evidence. Yeah. This is great, this. It alerts to five things. This is great. What you're going to see, and this is my evidence, I'm sorry to keep you waiting so long. What you're going to see is Jerry McCann's T-shirt, his O'Neill T-shirt alerted to. Ready? If we knew it all. Minky, not that. Minky. That was one thing. The second thing, number two, the biggest indication. What was that thing he just threw with his mouth? Goes back to the red t shirt twice. It then goes to the third item. Out of 100 items, right? It goes to the third item. This editing is making it worse. The third item it picks out is the T-shirts and Mrs. McCann's trousers. There you go. Woof, woof. Proves it. So that's the three items. And then... Come on, Alan, I can't watch this. I know it's not a great picture, but remember the motif at the front. O'Neill, look. Okay, O'Neill. Yeah. It's alerting to Jerry McCann, won't you? But remember the... That is the same T-shirt. I know it's not a great picture, but remember the motive at the front. O'Neill, look. Okay, O'Neill. It's alerting to Jerry McCann's O'Neill t-shirt. 
And there's the little motif on the arm. You see on the arm? So you've got the motif on the front and the arm. Look at the style of it. This is Jerry's T-shirt. Was... Well, that's very clearly what Jerry's wearing in that picture. But whether that's very clearly it on the ground in that other picture, I can't tell, to be honest. It looks like it might have something on the front and it might have... Taken from the villa. It's got the smell... And you haven't linked that video. You've just shown me the video of the dog barking around. Like, you haven't actually shown me anything like... You know, there's a video of a dog walking past a T-shirt that looks very similar. I know personally that that is could have a dog and it is from the McCann case. You know, I know that, but you haven't done all that work to link it all and shown it here. It's like just the roughest bit of... like, And it, it's something that's out there already. Like, yes, we know that's the McCann's clothes. I'll tell you something that's funny as well. When you think about this, they've laid out all those clothes and the cadaver dog is potentially alerted to something, yeah? Alan's pinned it on Jerry, look. Alan's proved that it's Jerry's T-shirt. He's pinned it on Jerry. Their Kate's trousers, I've proved it. But the police proved it when they gathered the eight clothes and laid them out because they gathered them from the McCann's. Like, they're not just random clothes. It's not just a big bag of fucking washing from, like, the villas. It's like, it's the McCann's clothes. So everything the dog alerts to is owned by the McCann's. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> of death on this t-shirt where he's carried a child close to his chest is this what he was wearing the night that smith saw him well no smith described him as wearing a, a shirt didn't he like a you know a shirt with buttons like a short sleeve shirt i think you see the t-shirt what i can remember that's the one might be wrong. That's the one. Could be the one. Probably is one of their t-shirts. And you saw that he didn't alert to 100 items, but he alerted to this t-shirt. Well, I can't guarantee that from the video you've shown Why? me. Why do these brilliant dogs alert to these items? I don't know if that means an alert. Like, he picks it up and he goes barking. and walks and he's Jerry's barking and barking and barking. Crazy. Yeah, he's barking and barking and barking. But, like, as far as I can remember, and I might just be ignorant and stupid here, like, maybe that is an alert. But as far as I can remember, when they alert for drug dogs, they lie down in front of the thing. It's not the barking and barking, it's they lie down in front of the thing. That's the alert. So I have to take it for Alan's grant, like, granted from Alan, that picking it up with your face a little bit and then barking and barking and walking around like that equals they alerted to that t-shirt and it's definite positive confirmed alert like i have to take it from alan on that nothing else and since he can't even run himself a bath let alone a stream you wouldn't think that he's the right person to listen to on anything but richard d hall probably covered this in the past anyway nothing else just those items and all we got was it was packed into boxes but they never, ever wrote down the items they're alerted to. But I showed you one by one. Big up's Curious oh, Cat. The dog was trained to bark. Fair enough. So it did a lot of barking there. Again, I can't confirm whether that amount of barking, uh, like, you know, you'd have to be the handler. And you'd have to ask the handler what was the dog doing there rather than say, well, it barked lots and it went around there. So that's all confirmed. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Uh, Alan's misrepresenting things. He might be on, you know, he might, that might be what it means. It might be an indication on that T-shirt. It might not. Alan doesn't know. He's just sort of winging it again, isn't he? Over. And I'm sorry I couldn't make it clearer, but I think it's obvious that that is the only T-shirt. Right, yeah, yeah, big ups. <laughs> I watched, I showed some cadaver dogs footage on my um, McCann video as well. It's on YouTube, isn't it? So, um, like I said, I've reviewed this video myself, so... As a layperson, I find it interesting, but I don't think I can go on the internet and say, right, that's the point where that dog, nav like, that's that. Because I don't know. I'm not, like, I can just go on the reports of the people who, you know, I'm not... <laughs> it'd be a different one, then he has to have a pale blue T-shirt with a motif on the front and a motif...
is more or less impossible. Motif. So, when I tell you that the Smith, remember what the Smith said? Absolutely sure. And there's the red t shirt being worn. But of course, the there's McCanns the own their own clothes. Worn, sure. Of course, the kids own their own clothes. I've no, out every item that a dog barked to. Yeah, but Alan thinks he's clever here because he's connected the clothes to the McCanns. But they are the McCann's clothes. That's the prerequisite of why they're in the room and the dogs are walking around. Like, he's not connected anything. I've now showed you every item. Mink. All four items, the red T-shirt, For fuck's sake. the white top of, Ma of Mrs. McCann's, the white check trousers, the O'Neill pale blue T-shirt, were the only items alert dog, Eddie. Eddie the man, smells the, man's an the idiot. scent of death on those four bit of clothes, but nothing else. They had five boxes of stuff. The only things they alerted to were the items they alerted to. Now, is that a coincidence? They alerted only to four items of clothing that belonged to the family, but nothing else. The did to their car and not other cars. The same way they alerted to 5A, but no other apartment. It's a coincidence, all of it. Everything logged and boxed by the PJ, all filed away, four items. I just want you to see it one more time, just so you can remember. Maybe stop again, Alan. There's the O'Neill T-shirt. Brilliant. Show me again, please. I'll enjoy that. <laughs> Fucking clown. Absolute clown. Or do you trust the dogs? What are you going to do? Reopen the case now, like 2024. Like, who cares? Like, this has been talked about, like, 20 years ago. The cadaver dogs. Do you trust the dogs? Oh, he's got that back. That's come back. And that, as I say, is not green screen technology, even though he's put up the green screen, because it's blacking out his chair and his chair's not green. Trust the McCann's. See how it's having trouble and it was hunting there. Do you trust the mainstream media or do you trust me? I don't trust you, do I? I'm telling you, point blank, that the Smith family are 80% sure that Jerry McCann was carrying his child down to the seafront that night. No, that's not what the Smith family said. They didn't say I'm 80% sure Jerry McCann was... Like, they reported seeing someone who they thought was carrying a child and they gave a description. Like, they didn't say their description wasn't I'm 80% sure it's Jerry. <laughs> Again, just like he misrepresents things. And I trust the Smiths. Well, Kuala Amaral agrees. He said that Maddie died in the apartment and she was removed and hidden away somewhere. The Smiths said they couldn't see the top. Not one of them said the colour of the top he was wearing. Why is that? Why do we have three Didn't Smith he? witnesses, all three, unable to describe his top? They all describe his trousers, his hair, his hairstyle. He's not wearing glasses. And they all use the same excuse that a small child covered the whole of his top hat. It doesn't. It doesn't. Have these files been doctored? I don't trust I don't trust them at all. Why do none of them say what he's wearing on his upper body? You just said you trusted the Smiths. Are you saying you don't trust the files? If he's wearing a light blue t-shirt like this one you'd see it wouldn't you well, not on your fucking stream you wouldn't look oh, you'd see it how how can it be obliterated by a child because well, if you're holding it there and you're looking at it from there 
you're going to see two thirds of the top. Look, the green screen's come through now. <laughs> yeah, not one witness will say what he was wearing on his top. But the dogs told you. This is the this is a disaster stream. This is why the man's a low cow. This is why the man's a laughing stock. And no one can watch this and not think what we're thinking, which is that the man is a laughing stock. That, that t shirt of Jerry's had a dead body on it. The t shirt had a dead body on it. I was right from the beginning. And the trouble is, I'm dyslexic. And I see it. I see Jerry carrying Maddie McCann in that top down the street that night. I see it, plain as day. And it's real. In my mind, I could be wrong. Look, being dyslexic doesn't mean that you have a special imagination where you can imagine pictures like some sort of, like, Rain Man figure. Like, you are not... You don't have a special mind. Like, you just didn't concentrate at school and didn't qualify in any of the necessary areas, Alan. That's you. Like, you're not some special... Like, you weren't diagnosed dyslexic when you were young. Like, that didn't exist. I don't know where you're getting this diagnosis from today, but... It's, it doesn't provide you with this ability to sort of see things like the Matrix. Like you just have a vivid imagination because you're a fantasist. I'll like, be honest with you, my dyslexia, where I see the whole picture, I'm normally right. You don't see any whole picture. Like you don't have any special gift to see any information that anyone else does. You have the same information presented to you as anyone else. And you're pretending that you see the vividness of the colour and the, the taste of the sea and everything. There is none of that because you don't have that information presented to you. You make it all up. It's your fantasy. You're a delusional narcissist. So you have vivid fantasies. Now, I built that story for you. So some people can't say, ah, but, ah, but. There's no ah, buts. Eddie alerted to that T-shirt. It's got the motif on the front and the motif on the side. It's, it's and I don't disagree that the dog mo like alerted to uh, the M McCann's clothing. In fact, that's part of the point of what we say on like you know the content. But it's no like hour long special, twenty twenty four big news. Now we know darn well that Mrs McCann picked up the dead body. We know that because it's on Cuddle Cat. It was on Cuddle Cat. It's going to be on the clothes she was wearing. She picks up the child. With the cuddle cat, with the, with the trousers, with the top. That's Where did Abba come from? It's is. Now we know darn well that Mrs. McCann picked up the dead. People can't say, ah, but, ah, but. All right, there. Uh, I think he's saying, ah, but, ah, but. He's proved it beyond all. Like, this is the definitive McCann video that proves it beyond all doubt, apparently. Him doing that with his phone and the picture of the dog and the. Like, that was the definitive. Now I built that story for you so some people can't say ah but ah but there's no ah buts eddie alerted to that t-shirt it's got the motif on the front and the motif on the side it's is now we know darn well that mrs mccann picked up the dead body we know that because it's on cuddle cat it was on cuddle cat it's gonna be on the clothes she was wearing she picks up the child with the cuddle cat with the with the trousers with the top that's that's her done the trousers the top cuddle cat she had the dead body in her arms in my opinion i'm allowed a theory and it's no different with Jerry McCann. His T-shirt's got the same odour on it. The dog's not going, oh, that's one odour, that's another. No, dead body on his T-shirt, dead body on her trousers, her T-shirt, her cuddly toy. Yeah. How the hell the little boy's T-shirt has got the smell of dead death on it? I don't know that bit. I don't know. Maybe the child was Maybe the child was sat with her when they found her. I don't know. See what I mean? There you go. Right, Alan takes a piece of information. The cadaver dog alerted to a piece of clothing and you think it's a piece of clothing that the child wears. And now the child sat next to her when she's picking up the body. Like it's it's A plus B equals Z, isn't it? It's like we just make these weird leaps. And you've seen today evidence of Alan's narcissistic conspiratorial delusions. The internet wasn't working. Maybe Mr. Rumble has pressed the button and silenced me. <laughs> So, maybe not the most balanced mind to be investigating true crime. But that shirt also touched the dead body. The little boy's touch touched this body, Mrs. McCann's top did, her trousers did, the cuddly toy did, and Jerry McCann's O'Neill top did. And if you want any more proof, I've just showed you three Smiths describing him. 
to you, carrying a child that would put that odour on that T-shirt that night. Now, if that doesn't deserve questioning, I don't know. I don't know what I don't know what does. And I've gutted that they wouldn't let me show that film tonight, but I will damn show it. I'll find a way. They wouldn't let me show that film. It's on YouTube, isn't it? Do you want me to show you now? Cans could have a dog's four minute fifty there. This one is an hour thirty seven. I think this is the one, isn't it? An hour and thirty seven of the cadaver dogs going around all the apartments. This one includes the man talking about it and you know telling you when it's an indicator and when it's not. Here it is. See the difference between someone who can run a stream and someone who can't. Yeah, here's me showing you the cadaver dogs. Alan can't do this for some reason. And it's an hour and 37 and you can watch it yourself. I'll put the link in chat. Um, you can search, you can find it yourself by searching Google cadaver dogs McCann. You know, no one's trying to hide this. This is out there on the internet. It's the full hour and a half of all the cadaver dog search. So Alan's pulled out a particular moment and given his own commentary to it. He's pieced together that in the police judicial files, they say we boxed up the McCann stuff and brought it to the cadaver dogs. He's pieced that together. So maybe you can give him that a picture of a box. Um, and then that's proved it. That proves it. Proves it all. I mean, it's interesting to me that here is a clothes in a suitcase. Alan said they were boxed it all up, but here's a suitcase as well that's involved and they're getting clothes out of a suitcase. Um, that's interesting to me. Uh, but there was a picture of a box there in this frame. You know, there's a picture of a box there as well. Uh, I don't know where the exact point where the dog alerts. That's a red top. Um, you know, I'm looking for that exact moment that the dog... Oh, here it is alerting by lying down, so maybe it's close to here. This looks like the same run of clothes. Yeah, this is it, look. So they let it go, it runs around the whole thing. It doesn't alert to anything. throws that he likes this it's now getting excited as far as I'm concerned he likes that do you want to know if that's an O'Neill top the colour grade what you can determine from this is that the dog should be white Really, shouldn't it? The dog should be white. And all this green in the shot, it's very green, isn't it, this shot? So this coloured T-shirt on the T-shirt might not be exactly the exact colour it is. It doesn't matter if it's uh, his O'Neill top or not, because like, he owns many tops, and of them, some of them are laid out here. These are the McCann's items, aren't they? That's what we're searching across. Um, but is that legitimately the O'Neill top itself? Hard to say, even through this much higher quality version that you're watching through my stream. The original upload is not of a very high quality. It's 240p, oh, sorry, 480p. Um, so. I mean, is it alerting here now? Like, it's doing a lot of alerting and a lot of barking across the whole sort of spectrum here, isn't it? So they've took the dog away now. They're going to send it back. And it's gone back over here again.
Like, this is how you do this. I can't believe Alan hasn't done this properly. Like, you know, I suppose his internet don't work, does it? So they're picking out that red T-shirt, and that's what they picked out. They didn't pick out the O'Neill shirt. They didn't pick out the trousers and all that. And whether Alan says it alerted to them or not, this is what they picked out. Because they did three tests. They're also filming this. So they're laying those out. I would say they're picking those out as well. They didn't pick out the O'Neill shirt. And they've got the box to say where it's come from and what it is. So that's, you know, a great detective Alan is. He's been able to spot that there's a box in the video that they've pointed at and said, this is the box that these things came out of. So well, well done, detective, for spotting that there's a box in the video where the things are and they've been kept in. You know, that's what they do with this evidence, isn't it? So... Um, he spotted the box they came out of before they did that. And here's more dogs, and there's more dogs, and there's more dogs, you know. So it's the dogs video. It's on YouTube. Um, if you want to see proper content about Madeleine McCann, go and watch my videos on Super Chuffer. This man is a waste of everyone's time, and his own. And I put it up, on, I put it up, I record it, and I put it into uh, Patreon, and I put it on here. You don't have to. You don't have to do that, Alan, because it's on YouTube for everyone to watch. What time is it? 11.30. What's this now? And I'm gutted that they wouldn't let me show that film tonight, but I will damn show it. I'll find a way and I'll put it up on, I'll put it up, I'll record it and I'll put it into a uh, patron and I'll put it on here. What time is it? Completely unnecessary. In fact, if you do that, you'll be stealing content from the person that legitimately owned it and uploaded it to YouTube and using it to fit, try and grift money from patrons who are paying... Like, you're putting someone else's content behind your patron paywall. That's not on. I don't know what happens here I'll when he it says... It's, it's 11.30 and he goes into deep thought. What time is it? 11.30. I'm going to do it again tomorrow in Patreon. I'll do it again tomorrow in Patreon and we'll, you'll see it. Right, then. he was considering doing a Patreon tonight, but he's decided he's not going to do it tonight. In his day. I will somehow get this going for tomorrow night. There's no point in me trying tonight because it ain't working tonight. Now, I'm going to ask you people. I feel like tomorrow on on Super Chuffer, I could just do Madeline McCann, Cadaver Dogs in full and just watch the entire Cadaver Dogs video with you on stream. And then he would try and sell it in his patron as like some secret thing and it would look stupid for him. But the truth is, if they're stupid enough to not be able to find that video on YouTube themselves and wanting to pay him so they can watch it after he's downloaded it off YouTube, which he's not supposed to do because he's not supposed to be on YouTube, and then uploaded it to another YouTube site so he can drop it in Patreon, which he's not supposed to do. Like, why would anyone want that? What do you think? Am I right? Have you ever seen such a thing as that? I've laid it out for you. I'm, it's not even hard for you to judge it yet. So like, AD, you're crazy. Or actually, this all fits. The dogs don't lie. The dogs just told you. The dogs don't lie, but you do. Didn't they? He carried a dead body in that t shirt on that oh t shirt. Oh my God. I'm sure of it. But no one believes me. But what does it really matter, Alan? The dog's alerted to several items of clothing there, let's say that, yeah? Like, that's one piece of evidence that goes into the case. And we all know it's the McCann case. Like, you talking to somebody here that doesn't know that the McCann case has got evidence against, that people would say that there is evidence against the McCanns in the McCann case, and they might have... Like, would you not... Like, are you blowing the case wide open? Assuredly, is night is day, that the dog alerted to something. We all know the dog's alerted to something. It's like common knowledge isn't it? The dog's alerts. And then that's because it's their stuff. And like you connected it to them. You proved that they own the stuff. Well, they own the stuff. It's part of the fucking like, investigation. It's part of the 
you know, the files, they own the stuff. That's why they're checking the stuff. So that's not much of a, you know, a leap, is it? I can't prove it. They say I'm crazy. I've been saying that for six, seven years. But people don't understand. Either they're not understanding the dogs, or they're not understanding me. Or they can't put it together in their head. I don't know what it is. But no one gives me credit for this theory. And it's just as good as the shadows. What I've just showed you is just the same as the shadow. How? In that it's hard to understand and decipher from your terrible, terrible quality images exactly what it is you're looking at. Yeah. It's me and my dyslexia spotting something no one's ever seen. Everyone's seen that. But I'm sure. As sure as eggs, there's shadows for the girls. There's a dead body being carried by him in that T-shirt. I trust the dogs. But the people, the experts, didn't pick out the T-shirt, yeah? But you're more expert than the experts. And you're saying it's that T-shirt. You alerted to the T-shirt. The dog alerted to the sheet. They alerted to the T-shirt. And, and yet, the experts didn't pick it out. But you're more expert than the experts. And that proves now, without a shadow of a doubt, that Jerry McCann's T-shirt, which you can sort of say is Jerry McCann's T-shirt because you've got a picture of him wearing a similar T-shirt. But I can say it's Jerry McCann's T-shirt because the box said it's Jerry McCann's T-shirt. Uh has been like it's not like these other things were marked by the cadaver dog as well in the past that doesn't that's not enough to convict but now we've got jeremy can's t-shirt case closed job done convert like that's done that proves it alan's proved it solved after all these years wow no one saw this angle <laughs> dogs then i have to trust my own judgment but what does operation grains say about it nothing couldn't care less. Will they question Jerry McGann or why he's got the smell of cadaver on his T-shirt? Nah. Will they question Mrs. McCann why the cuddly toy's got the smell of death on it? No. Nah. No. Will they question you, Mrs. McCann? Why do you even care, Alan? No. Do you just want to try and get 40 quid for talking on the internet for an evening and you think that the story of dead children is something that tugs at the heartstrings of, in your opinion, what you call Google grannies, and that's one of the reasons he might have been binned off YouTube, is the Google granny slur. Um, you know, those people, you think the audience for true crime are slightly older ladies who are a bit too emotional and they've had too many wines and they'll throw you 40 quid and you're their big hero. And well done for trying to grift those people of money all these years. It's now come to nothing. You might as well shut up. <laughs> trousers smell of death? No. Well, they say, why did your little boy touch a dead body in his red T-shirt? No. And I'm not lying to you. And I'm not asking them to arrest them for murder. I'm asking them to bloody question them on what I've told them. It's not too much to ask, is it? Not too much to ask Rourke to question NK, is it? Hold on. I'll just ring him up. Hello, is that the police? Yeah, I've got some vital information on the Madeleine McCann case. Is it too much for you to... to, to is it too much to ask... For you to open up the case and question, or is it still open? Is it? Is it too much for you to ask for you to bring Madeleine McCann's parents into questioning to ask them about the cadaver dog scent on their clothing? Oh, it is. It would require legal proceedings and all sorts of stuff. And you've already talked to them several times in the past, or at least have statements and contact with and lawyers. And oh, I see. Okay, glad you could settle that for me. Turns out, Alan, yeah, it is too much for them to just grabbed them in for questioning over what Alan Vinicum saw on a YouTube video that's been out in the world for years now. Um, seems like the police aren't going to be doing that, Alan. Or is it? Are we in the same boat with NK as you are on the McCann's? I'm knackered. I'll see you tomorrow night. I you, will are, do this. you are knackered. This tomorrow on Patreon. You will do that tomorrow on Patreon as well. This is what he does. Tomorrow on Patreon, it'll be the same thing, but with a slightly clearer episode on the video if he can get his YouTube sorted. Like, that's all. So why would you pay for that on Patreon? You'd have to be an absolute fool. They won't win. Trolls win. <laughs>